What's up guys? It's yo boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn as Uchiha Reviving the Clan with Harem System. Part 2. Like, share and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also remember to check out the original story, link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. The Achiha clan has a vast residence. Originally, the Achiha clan had their residence in a major area in central Konoha. When the Nine Tails incident occurred, the third Hokage forcibly ordered the Achiha clan to move from the core area of Konoha to the outskirts, which caused a lot of resistance from the Achiha clan. So, he used both force and persuasion, suppressing the Achiha clan based on the Sharingan, seen in the eyes of the Nine Tails, and at the same time providing some compensation to the Achiha clan. This compensation was in the form of land area. The land given to them on the outskirts of Kanoha village was not much different in value from the land the Achiha clan had in the city center. Although everyone understood that the difference in value was not significant, in reality, the land in the outskirts was far less valuable than the central area of the city. But as a result, the Achiha clan's residents expanded a lot. And even with so many Achiha clan members, before the clan was wiped out, they did not fully utilize all the land in their residence. This gave Natsuo enough room to operate. Natsuo pointed to the map. We can develop a women's club here, teaching yoga for body shaping, promoting beauty and skin care, in addition to body spa services within our Achiha clan. We can develop a KTV here, making it convenient for the girls to sing and relax at night. We can develop a bar here. It wouldn't be bad to create a Kabukicho-like district here. In the early stages, we can attract female customers, and later, we can also attract male customers. Natsuo remembered clearly how bars were promoted in the modern age first. Hire a group of beautiful girls to create a lively atmosphere, then use these beautiful girls to attract a bunch of guys. The more guys they attract, the more girls they attract, forming a cycle. His Achiha development plan could also follow this route. Yukino nodded in agreement. Indeed, although our Achiha clan is not short of money, the expenses are getting bigger. It's a good thing to earn some extra. Natsuo also thought the same. Although the Achiha family had considerable wealth, and various industries were continuously contributing income, why not earn money if it's easy? You guys are truly geniuses. Sasuke covered his head with one hand, his small face filled with helplessness. But Natsuo, won't this damage the reputation of our Achiha clan? Natsuo's development plan was basically turning the Achiha residence into an entertainment street. But what about the honor of our Achiha clan? Natsuo said, although many experts don't care much about money, quantity can also cause a qualitative change. Do you believe that if our Achiha clan were to give 1 billion to the San Shinobi village, Rasa would send his own daughter over to marry into a clan? If all the children of the Achiha clan were born to Jonan level Kunoichi, do you think our Achiha clan would still have difficulty revival? Although not all children born to Jonan level Kinochi would necessarily advance to Jonan themselves, their potential would undoubtedly be greater. Sasuke was immediately convinced, for the revival of the Achiha clan, who would care about matters of reputation? And so, the Achiha clan development plan began. The ninja's actions have always been fast. Natsuo directly spent a large sum of money in Kanoha to announce construction tasks repairs or rather, the reconstruction of the Achiha residence. With the help of ninja techniques, various clubs, dance halls, KTVs, and other entertainment facilities were established at an exaggerated speed. The first one to be built was the Achiha Women's Wellness Club. It included massages with essential oils, body sculpting yoga, beauty treatments, body spas, and other services. These were all exclusive enjoyments of the Achiha clan, specially developed by Natsuo for the maintenance of his wives as well as a little bit of fun between couples yes, projects like massages with essential oils were personally handled by Natsuo himself. He personally taught a few apprentices and then opened the women's wellness club. When the women of Kanoha heard that these services were specifically for the Achiha noblewomen, they were instantly excited. They generously donated money and came to experience it. After experiencing it once, they instantly became addicted. The unheard of feeling made them feel light, with rosy complexions, relaxed muscles, and rejuvenated skin. This feeling was amazing. Even some noblewomen from other ninja clans couldn't help but touch their own dull skin and brought their friends. The Achiha Women's Wellness Club became a sensation. Next was the Achiha Bar. Natsuo frequently appeared, engaging in acts like accidentally meeting a beauty and paying for everyone's expenses, which made the Achiha Bar popular. Then came the dance hall, KTV, bowling alley, foot bath, billiard hall in just three to four months. Achiha Entertainment Street resounded throughout Kanoha, becoming a place of relaxation for young women. 
Men also began to instinctively chase after them, sensing the wind, in coming specifically to spend money and meet women. The Achiha residence development plan was a blazing success. And it wasn't just a one-time occurrence. As the Achiha residence development plan succeeded, Natsuo also received another surprise. Natsuo looked at the pattern on the mirror, which resembled a windmill. Have I awakened the Manjekyo Sharingan? I finally activated the Manjekyo Sharingan. It wasn't easy. Natsuo's eyes welled up with tears. Looking back, since the Achiha clan's annihilation, there had been so much suffering, danger, and enemies constantly watching him. After countless hardships, he finally achieved a good result. It was truly not easy. For this step today, he had to marry and take wives madly, collecting dozens of beautiful women as confidants. Singing and fighting all night, surrounded by the fragrance of women, how tragic, how painful. It was truly a world of misery. But ultimately, this awakening of his eyes was both unexpected and expected. Natsuo's awakening was not triggered by any emotional stimulation, but purely by his mental power. Today, a child of one of his wives was born, and the attribute reward happened to be mental power. He had already had more than 20 children, and about half of them had given him mental power enhancement rewards, some even with plus 2 or plus 3 bonuses. Including today's reward, he had gained a total of 26. Although Natsuo still didn't know the standard for the value of a plus 1 in mental power, compared to Chakra's plus 1 value, it was likely that a plus 1 in mental power was not a small number. After accumulating it multiple times, he finally reaped the benefits. Powerful mental energy surged into his brain, causing his eyes to ache, and then bursting forth with formidable pupil power. My Manjekyo Sharingan techniques are Amaterasu and Ama no Yuzum. Amaterasu, the eternal black flames that never extinguished. They wouldn't disappear until the target was burned to ashes, making it an extremely destructive technique. As for the other ability, Ama no Yuzum, it made Natsuo's expression become strange. Its ability was very simple, which was to restore physical strength. The degree of restoration was minimal, roughly equivalent to half a day's recovery, after consuming the energy from using the Sharingan. Of course, in contrast, the consumption was also minimal. Natsuo tried it out and found that the consumption was so low, that he could use the technique a hundred times in a row, without even a drop of blood flowing from his eyes. It was almost equivalent to no consumption at all. But the usefulness of this technique was even greater than that of Amaterasu. After all, it seems that after being exhausted, I can use this technique cough cough. Natsuo was also human. Now that he had over 30 wives, his daily schedule was packed. At least three times a day. This consumption even if he drank black beer every day, he couldn't bear it. Although the chakra increase improved his physical condition to some extent, one must know that even Naruto, who had enormous chakra reserves, seemed constantly exhausted in the Boruto series. With this technique, he could now engage in battles with numerous experts. Natsuo stood up without hesitation, and called a few wives who hadn't become pregnant yet. Ria, Yuka, Rina tonight. I will fight like a hero. The Achiha clan will welcome a new baby boom. Natsuo then continued to take in several wives in succession. Among them, he spent money to recruit a jonin, as well as two exceptionally talented kunoichis, making a big move that shook Kanoha, and attracted more women to linger on Achiha Entertainment Street. It even gave off a feeling of flaunting wealth, and it was estimated that many people were envious. Even Kakuzu, who had returned to work, couldn't help but complain, feeling that his workload had increased. But Natsuo didn't mind. With the activation of the Manjekyo Sharingan this time, he had successfully reached the cage level, coupled with the powerful chakra that belonged to the cage level, and various ninjutsu rewards that allowed him to freely use them in battle even among the high level cage. He was not weak. Even if he were to clash with Kanoha, he wouldn't be at a disadvantage. Not to mention just showing off some wealth. The Achiha revival plan should be accelerated. On the other hand, perhaps out of envy and longing for Natsuo's recent abundance of women, Naruto finally decided to put Natsuo's advice into practice. He cast a wide net, caught many fish, and tried hard to approach girls. In the end, he successfully made three female classmates willing to die for him. The first female classmate, Naruto, if you bother me again, I'll die to show you. The second female classmate, if you say another word, let's die together. The third female classmate, be your girlfriend. Sure, if I'm blind in my next life, I'll marry you. Naruto, after being rejected once again, he couldn't help but seek out Natsuo. Natsuo, is there something wrong with this situation? Naruto looked innocent. I clearly did as you said, so why is it like this? In Naruto's eyes, there was a sense of confusion. This shouldn't be happening. I followed Natsuo's advice, so why haven't I found a girlfriend yet? Natsuo was silent for a moment. Could he tell him that he was just teasing him? Besides, he looked at Naruto's muddy shoes, cheap dirty clothes, unkempt hairstyle, and comical cat beard that might become beautiful in the future, but was currently ridiculous. Does this guy even realize he's chasing after girls? Natsuo decided to give up on even trying to help him and comforted him. It's okay, Naruto. Failure is the mother of success. Keep casting your net, 
and you will definitely catch fish. Naruto's eyes filled with anticipation. Really? Natsuo, you're not lying to me, right? Am I the kind of person who would lie to you? Natsuo said with dissatisfaction. Do I have no integrity in your eyes? How can you not trust me all right? I'll swear to the heavens. As long as there is a single false word in what I say, let the entire third Hokage's family perish. Now do you believe me? Natsuo raised three fingers, his words resolute. Naruto nodded vigorously. I believe you. Natsuo, I believe you. If Natsuo is willing to make such a solemn oath, then it must be true. I was too much to doubt Natsuo. I'll continue fishing. This time, I will definitely succeed. Naruto left excitedly, deciding to set a small goal for himself confessing to every female classmate in the school. This time, I'll definitely catch something. Natsuo had to continue adapting to his increased power due to the awakening of the Manjakia Sharingan. In fact, there have been many situations like this before. It may be that every time a child is born, the techniques he receives become completely integrated with him. But the increase in chakra as well as the increase in mental power generates small changes in his body, which meant that he constantly dedicates a little time to adapt. The stronger the ninja, the better the control over his body and his own energy should be. He can't afford to make such a simple mistake. But this time, it was the promotion of the Manjakyo Sharingan after all, and the increase in power was a bit exaggerated, requiring Natsuo to take some time to adapt to the surge in strength. And those two techniques not to mention Amaterasu. But Ama no Yuzum is truly powerful. Newcomers like Misaki were left weak in their limbs because of this pupil technique, and in the end, they all praised it together. So, this is the power of the Achiha it's truly terrifying. With this technique, the power balance within the Achiha clan, has undergone astonishing changes. Natsuo was also decisive, increasing the reward for having children, and spending a lot of money to recruit several female jonin. Because the pupil technique's effect was too strong, it gave him more energy to have more children. So Natsuo even encountered a few talented, good-natured, and clean girls in the newly built Achiha KTV, bars, and other places, and took them into his harem. This behavior drove the female ninjas of Kanoha even more crazy, and they spent more money on the Achiha Entertainment Street. When Natsuo finished adapting to his power and was ready to continue his efforts for the revival of the Achiha clan with his wives, an unexpected guest arrived at his door. Achiha clan reception room. Enko, are you here to find Yuhi Kurunai? Natsuo blinked. But in today's training, I counted Kurunai's illusion, and she got a little injured. She's resting now. Yuhi Kurunai is showing signs of pregnancy now, so she can't receive visitors. However, Mitarashi Enko shook her head. No, I'm here to find you. Find me. Natsuo was puzzled. Yes. Enko nodded, her face turning red, but her expression pretended to be calm. If I were to sell myself, how much would your Ichiha clan pay? Are you here for the mission to have children for the Ichiha clan? Natsuo was surprised. Something of the sort. Enko sighed lightly. But the standard reward won't do. I don't plan on selling myself cheaply. There was a hint of sadness and helplessness in her eyes. She couldn't bear it anymore. Her own strength was still weak, and she couldn't earn a lot of money through missions. Her family was also suppressed and unable to provide resources for her. The lack of resources led to slow progress. When will I be able to find that damn man and settle this account with him? Anko clenched her teeth, feeling anxious. And recently, the Achiha clan has been spending a lot of money, exuding a rich aura. Anko, who had lost a large number of snakes in a mission, causing her strength to decline, finally couldn't bear it, and bowed to reality. I understand. Natsuo pondered for a moment and nodded. Although he didn't know what had happened to Anko recently, that made this naturally proud woman bow her head to achieve her goal. But she could guess that like the other Jonin level Kinoichis who reluctantly accepted the mission of bearing a child for the Achiha clan, she was in a difficult situation, and she didn't see a way out. Although Enko didn't need to take care of her family, she still had the goal of seeking revenge against Orochimaru. For this goal she could only choose to let go of her pride. How about the treatment of a Jonin? Natsuo pondered for a moment. Although becoming a disciple of Orochimaru was in itself a test of talent, but still considering that he only became a Tokubetsu Jonin until the end of the series, it was not worth the effort on Natsuo's part. But now that he has more power, he could afford to relax a little and help one of his favorite female characters from the Naruto series. That's not what I need. Anko took a deep breath. I can marry into your Echiha clan and not ask you for money in the future when we have more children, but I need a large sum of money up front. At this age when I can progress the most easily, I can't let money hold me back anymore. Anko was only 20 now, which was a good time for her strength to improve. But by the time she turned 30, it would be good if her strength did not recede. However, it would be very difficult to increase it. She didn't want to waste her potential or give up her goal of hunting down Orochimaru, which was why she ultimately chose to sell herself. To achieve your goal, what's wrong with overdrawing your body in the future? Anko looked at Natsuo, who furrowed his brows and hesitated. She took a deep breath and showed a sweet smile with a hint of wickedness, licking her lips. Don't worry, 
I won't let you lose. I will definitely satisfy you and make you feel like it's worth it. Natsuo looked at Enko's lithe crimson tongue, feeling tempted. This proposal seemed quite tempting. Enko, are you using those conditions to test my mental strength? When was I, Natsuo, a person capable of resisting such temptations? Natsuo didn't hesitate and let out a sigh. Of course, the conditions Enko offered were very tempting. She only has one child for now, and after turning 30, when the growth rate of strength slows down, you can have as many children as you want. Anko would not refuse, nor would she ask for additional rewards. At the same time, Anko herself was willing to serve as a ninja for the Achiha clan, willing to fight and die for the Achiha clan. This was a condition that other wives could not offer. After all, they married into the Achiha clan to live the life of a rich lady. The children they have will continue to have the same potential. On the other hand, the children Anko has will increase her potential as she continues to get stronger. Making them train, fight, or even sacrifice themselves was something that other wives would not be very willing to do. But Anko was simple, and she was willing to do anything to achieve her goal. Although she would receive a reward five times the normal Jonin standard, she would become a member of the Achiha clan from now on, and you could assign her as you pleased. Damn obsession from my previous life. This is the opportunity to have a relationship with one of my favorite characters from the Naruto series. Besides, she could do missions and have children for me. This was a great deal. Although Enko's current strength does not justify the five times Jonin level reward, her strength may improve in the future. What currently limits his strength is his financial situation, not his talent. Furthermore, with this I can fulfill one of the fantasies of my previous life. According to the original plot, she could become a special Jonin in a few years, and even one of the strongest. With the financial support of the Achiha clan, it would be easy for her to become a Jonin within a few years. I there is a high probability that she will become an elite Jonin in the future. With all these conditions, Natsuo has no more reason to refuse. The reward was negotiated, and the contract was signed. Natsuo took Anko to collect the reward. Also, he led Anko towards the Achiha clan's ninja library. Yuhi Koronai was also accompanying them. Anko. I never expected that you would end up Yui Kurinai covered her forehead with her hand, her tone filled with helplessness. Accepting the Achiha clan's mission was a matter of time in my situation, but I really didn't expect that you would accept that mission. Anko was left speechless by her friend. You were supposed to come to the Achiha clan to teach Natsuo Jinjutsu, but you ended up with a child in your belly from the Jinjutsu. Anko had already married into the Achiha clan, so it was impossible to hide Yuhi Kuronai's pregnancy. Yuhi Kuronai felt helpless. How could she face her best friend in this situation? Fortunately, her best friend was also involved. If it was accidentally discovered by someone else, that would truly be embarrassing. We're here. This is the Achiha clan's ninja library. Natsuo smiled faintly. Please come in. During this time, he had reacquired some of the ninjutsu that the third Hokage had taken in addition to those from the system rewards and the few that initially remained. He managed to almost completely restore the Achiha clan's ninjutsu collection. There were strong barriers here, and Natsuo had paid a high price to have the Kanoha barrier division put them up. He also asked Conan to help him place another layer of barriers on the outside of the barrier. But with Natsuo leading them, they naturally didn't have to worry about these things. Natsuo pushed open the door to the attic, and made an inviting gesture. Anko swallowed nervously and exchanged a glance with Yuhi Kurunai, her eyes filled with solemnity. From the Sengoku era to the present, there were an incredibly large number of scrolls that were stored even comparable to the entire inventory of some small ninja villages. Luckily the hidden parts of the library were not discovered by Kanoha, when they took the things for safekeeping from him. And Natsuo only discovered them during the library renovation because of the Sharingan. It should be noted that although Kanoha is a village that handles all styles of ninjutsu, its fire style ninjutsu is one of the most exceptional. And the Kanoha fire style was contributed by the Ichiha clan. Although there were other clans that contributed later and various geniuses who contributed their own research results, the foundation was laid by the Ichiha clan. The two women walked in. Looking around, there were bookshelves filled with scrolls. It was like a library. However, most most books in a library are useless to ninjas. But here, these were ninjutsu that were treasured by the outside world. Here are a total of 1391 B ranked ninjutsu scrolls here, 270 A ranked ninjutsu scrolls, and 17 S ranked ninjutsu scrolls. They include the five elemental nature transformations, jinjutsu, tojutsu, and even some low level yin yang release. As long as it's a type you can mention, we Achiha have them all. The corners of Natsuo's mouth slightly lifted. This is the strongest heritage of the Achiha clan. Don't be fooled by the hundreds of millions of tales donated for the mission of having children for the Ichiha clan. Actually, in the hearts of higher level ninjas, this money may not be comparable to the A and S rank ninjutsu stored here. There are some things that money can't buy. The ninjutsu here is priceless. In terms of value, it is 10 times larger than the sum of all Ichiha industries. If used properly, it could even create a medium-sized ninja village. If a strong person emerges with good luck coupled with some accumulation, it might even turn the five great shinobi nations into six. This is the true heritage of the Ichiha. 
Yuhi Kuranai swallowed her saliva, as if feeling a heavy pressure coming towards her, like a mountain. But she didn't think Natsuo was lying Kakashi himself had gained fame as a copy ninja. And with so many Sharingan experts in the Achiha clan, copying enemy ninjutsu in battle, and leaving a backup for the clan, isn't this a normal thing? Natsuo bringing them here was also a show of trust. With the Achiha's heritage to assist, what can't you achieve? Join the Achiha clan, and you won't regret it. The main purpose of this is to show the strengths of the Achiha clan to Yuhi Kuranai. After all, Anko already joined the Achiha clan. Yuhi Kuranai was indeed shocked. However, Anko remained silent. Natsuo blinked his eyes. Anko, if you want any ninjutsu, just go and find it. Anko, Anko. He called out a few times, but Anko remained silent. Yuhi Kuranai carefully looked for a while, her face turning red, and whispered, Anko, it's just the three of us here. If you can't stand, just sit down. It's not embarrassing. Thud. Anko directly collapsed, her limbs going weak. Natsuo. This girl, did she just have a high tie from the sheer amount of ninjutsu? Wealth. Sometimes it can truly overwhelm a person's soul. Even when they finally selected the ninjutsu and left the ninjutsu library, Anko's mouth still had traces of greedy saliva. Then, looking at the amount just transferred to the bank, if I had so many ninjutsu, so, why would I continue to use Orochimaru's secret techniques? She wasn't stupid. She knew it would be difficult to defeat Orochimaru using the ninjutsu taught by Orochimaru. But without these ninjutsu, the success rate of using other ninjutsu would be even lower. And now, with the Ichiha clan's ninjutsu, why would she still need Orochimaru's forbidden technique? It's showy and expensive. I don't need it anymore. She didn't know if she truly believed that with the Ichiha clan's assistance, her chances of revenge would be high. Anyway, tonight Natsuo discovered that Anko had a lot of tricks up her sleeve, especially her flexible body, which came from being a disciple of Orochimaru, and her agile tongue. Experienced in countless battles, Natsuo was almost overwhelmed by her for a moment, almost killed by Anko, who was still a rookie. Fortunately, a rookie's momentum only lasts for a short while, and her physical discomfort made her unsuitable for a prolonged battle. Natsuo quickly regained his composure and gave her a harsh lesson. However, this style, it feels somewhat similar to one of my wives. Natsuo narrowed his eyes. So Orochimaru also sent people to me. The style of each ninja is something difficult to change. For example, the shinobi of Sanagaka have a resilient character due to their harsh environment. Even in desperate situations, they are determined to make a breakthrough. The shinobi of Karigaka have outstanding individual abilities, but they are not good at cooperation, and are not skilled in large-scale battles. On the contrary, the shinobi of Awagaka have poor individual abilities, but they have excellent cooperation. Coupled with their proficiency in earth release and the absence of strong individuals, they can achieve impressive results through teamwork. Shinobi who are trained directly by Orochimaru also often have a feeling of deviating from the norm. So, the girl Aiko who accepted the task earlier was sent by Orochimaru. When that Aiko served him, it was quite stimulating. Her service attitude was very enthusiastic, and she was also flexible ahem. Anyway, although it's just a matter of style in relationships between men and women, Natsuo still believed that his guess was correct. Of course, he didn't care about such things. After all, to be honest, there are quite a few spies in the Ichiha clan. Among the spies he discovered or those who secretly confessed to him, there was one from Root, two from the third Hokage, and one from the Sunagaka. For example, the third Hokage sent Yuzuki Yugao and her superior captain. Then Natsuo took them both to bed at the same time. He wondered what kind of thoughts they had at that moment when they saw themselves together in her bed. Shyness. Discomfort. Embarrassment. Well, Natsuo felt pretty good about it and thought that he could have more interactions like this in the future. The numerous spies couldn't affect the development of the Achiha clan. Yuzuki Yugao is about to give birth to her second child, but she hasn't provided any information to the third Hokage yet. Well, it's not like she can do anything. After all, apart from Natsuo's own strength, there seems to be no other information about the Achiha clan that she can report. Even if she wants to complete her spy mission, it seems that there is nothing she can do. Recently, perhaps because her second child is about to be born, Yuzuki Yugao's secret contacts with the outside world have become less frequent, giving off an air of I might as well just accept my fate. After all, the benefits provided by the Achiha clan are something that the village cannot match. Which normal spy would ignore these benefits and their own children just to pick sesame seeds? Two months later, Anko successfully became pregnant and gradually reduced her intense training, focusing all her attention on changing her fighting style. Yes, she has completely abandoned Orochimaru's secret techniques and decided to become a normal shinobi. Before her, several jonin who had to devote themselves to the Achiha clan due to various factors also became pregnant. At the same time, the Achiha clan also experienced a baby boom. First, Yukino's child was born. Then Yuga's child was born. In addition to the children born to other wives, the cries of babies in the Achiha clan residence became even louder. 
And this naturally brought many benefits to Natsuo. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 45, you gain chakra plus two, fire release. Phoenix Sage Flower Nail Crimson. Offspring plus two, the comprehensive potential evaluations are 51 and 52 respectively. You gain mental power plus six, mystical palm technique. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation of this clan member is 101, you gain chakra plus six, wood release. Wood clone technique. The first one is a normal reward for giving birth to a child. The second one is for twins. So the rewards are combined, adding up to a total of six points in attributes. The ninjutsu has also become much more advanced, granting the A-rank medical ninjutsu, healing jutsu. This is also normal. Natsuo has had many children, and this is not the first time he has seen twins. Although the rewards for twins accumulated and can upgrade the rewards, since the probability is uncontrollable, Natsuo doesn't pay too much attention to it. The key point is the ninjutsu reward given in the third prompt. It is normal for children with the Achiha bloodline to learn fire release, which is why the corresponding ninjutsu is given as a reward. It's also normal to learn medical ninjutsu, as there are always some clan members who possess it. But how could an Achiha clan member possibly have would release? The mother of the third child is Yuzuki Yuga, a female ninja with excellent talent but no other bloodline. Although the child born to Natsuo and Yugao has surpassed 100 in the comprehensive potential assessment, it is impossible for them to have the Senja bloodline. So, if the comprehensive potential assessment score is high, then ninjutsu unrelated to the parent's bloodline will be rewarded. Natsuo thought to himself, because my strength has been increasing until now. In addition to that Yuzuki Yugao is one of the mothers with the strongest talent among those who have given birth so far. Yuzuki Yugao always brings surprises to Natsuo with every birth. If the evaluation score exceeds 100 could a reward related to other fictional worlds appear. Natsuo will wait for Kurenai's son next, so he can verify his guess, as well as the children of several unnamed Jonin level Kinochi from the original story, and Anko's son, who was recently conceived. Natsuo then tried out the new wood clone technique reward. This reward for wood release is simply a wood clone technique without Senja Hashirama's Keke Genkai just an ninjutsu. To put it plainly, it's at most on par with Yamato's level, slightly stronger due to Natsuo's chakra enhancement, but Natsuo is not disappointed. Currently it is just a small-scale ninjutsu. When you accumulate enough chakra in the future, activate Sage Mode, and have obtained the reward of Hashirama's Keke Genkai. That will be the real Mokuden. Natsuo is looking forward to it. Natsuo was excited and wanted to see what rewards Kurenai's children, Anko, and the other Jonin level Kunoichi would give him. But his train of thought was interrupted by an unexpected situation. A Kunoichi who was six months pregnant actually abandoned the glory and wealth brought by the Ichiha clan. Resolutely, she defected. Obviously, she is a loyal spy. A true Kunoichi who was not swayed by the Ichiha clan's money. I didn't expect there to be someone like this. Natsuo sighed helplessly. I can only say that Orochimaru is really competent. His brainwashing skills are so profound that not even money and a comfortable life could influence this spy. Indeed, the female spy who defected this time is none other than Miss Aiko. Natsuo recognized her serving style to be similar to Anko's, and concluded that she must be a spy sent by Orochimaru. Ayako was actually very conflicted. In fact, as Natsuo had suspected before, she was a spy sent by Orochimaru to obtain the Ichiha bloodline. But the Ichiha clan's treatment was really good. Made serving them. High-end toiletries, a spacious mansion, abundant food, and perfect medical care. If possible, she would have loved to stay with the Achiha clan for the rest of her life. However, she was still a spy after all, carefully cultivated by Orochimaru, and had received Orochimaru's favor since she was young. For Orochimaru, she was willing to die. Well, in fact, most female spies, when joining the Achiha clan, had to sacrifice themselves for the village, abandon their own dignity as women, and even be prepared to sacrifice their lives. But under the gentle bombardment of the Achiha clan, not many could hold out for long. However, Orochimaru was indeed a life mentor, a master of brainwashing. Ayako was one of the few who still held on to her mission. Of course, Ayako had also been conflicted for a long time. Because the first three months of pregnancy were the most critical period for fetal development, and not suitable for traveling. In the late stage of pregnancy, seven to nine months pregnant women undergo significant physiological changes and have reduced adaptability to the environment, making it unsuitable for travel. So, her six-month pregnancy was already the deadline. She hesitated for a long time. In the end, she chose Orochimaru over the Ichiha clan. Ayako felt that if she continued to stay with the Ichiha family, the Ichiha would definitely be satisfied, but Orochimaru-sama would be hurt. But if she went to seek refuge with Orochimaru-sama, perhaps Orochimaru-sama could provide her with a win-win solution. Maybe a few years later, she could return to the Ichiha clan in a glorious manner with her child and continue to be a wealthy lady. So, she seized the opportunity to escape from the Ichiha clan residence. And then she was immediately discovered by Kakuzu. How about I go help you catch her? 
Kakuzu said in a deep voice, then added, My mission is only to protect the members within the Achiha clan residence from external threats. This is not within my responsibility. So, it would require additional payment. Natsuo glanced helplessly at Kakuzu. No need. He looked at the gradually disappearing figure of the woman, and shook his head gently. I'll handle this matter myself. Natsuo actually admired Orochimaru's level of brainwashing. There were many spies among his own wives, planted by the third Hokage, Danzo, Sunagaka, and other villages. Various people from different places, many of whom were high-level spies who had infiltrated Konoha for many years, with impeccable mental strength. But over two years had passed, and not a single person had defected. Although Orochimaru was defeated by Itachi, he was extremely obsessed with the Ichiha bloodline. However, he had limited manpower and energy and couldn't focus too much on the Ichiha bloodline. 99% of the Ichiha clan members were incomparable to him, one of the Sanin. In fact, before seeing Sasuke's talent, he didn't pay much attention to Sasuke either. Otherwise, the Embu arranged by the third Hokage to protect Sasuke won't be able to stop him. So, this should just be an incidental move by Orochimaru. But he ended up being the only spy in the Achiha clan who defected. Of course, Natsuo didn't blame Ayako. She came as a spy in the first place, and Natsuo knew that. Both sides benefited from each other. If we have to say, she belongs to the loyal warrior who hasn't been defeated by sugar-coated bullets, with a much higher moral character than ordinary people, and should be respected. But Orochimaru, if you can send spies to my house, then it's reasonable for me to return the favor, right? Ayako tried to escape. Being pregnant, she was somewhat inconvenienced in her movements. If she hadn't hidden a certain strength, she wouldn't have the confidence to escape. Natsuo, you must be very sad, Ayako felt gloomy in her heart. But then she became excited again. It's okay, once I complete Orochimaru-sama's mission, I can beg Orochimaru-sama for mercy. Maybe we can see each other again soon. When the time comes, no matter how you punish me, I can accept it. I know you've been thinking about some ways to play for a long time, and I can accompany you. She touched her big belly, her eyes filled with a hint of tenderness. Although being pregnant and traveling long distances was not a good thing for the child. But when the child is born, with the Achiha bloodline's talent, maybe they can receive Orochimaru-sama's personal education. The Achiha clan is good in everything, but the strongest is only Natsuo, a ninja who is officially a jonin, but actually a chunin. And he definitely can't compare to Orochimaru-sama in terms of child education. Maybe in the future, there will be someone like that guy named Itachi, who will make a move against the Achiha clan, and my talented son can defeat him and restore the Achiha's reputation. She dreamed of a win-win situation. Ayako gritted her teeth and continued forward. She didn't know which one of her false traces had worked, but she had safely avoided any possible pursuit from Kanova along the way. This made Ayako feel even more like she was the chosen one. If the escape went so smoothly, then my remaining dreams should also go smoothly, right? Soon, she crossed the land of fire and entered the land of rice fields. Then, following some secret codes left by Orochimaru, she found an underground base. Ayako, you've worked hard on this mission. Orochimaru's face was slightly pale, and with the strange equipment around him, he looked somewhat sinister. Orochimaru-sama, I have completed the task you gave me. I have brought back a child with the Achiha bloodline. Ayako's eyes were filled with fanaticism. Yes, not only did you bring back a child with the Achiha lineage, but you also brought back an additional person. Ayako was stunned and suddenly turned her head. She saw a handsome young man standing casually behind her. She couldn't help but exclaim, Natsuo. Dressed in a pure white shirt with straight pants and a slight smile, Natsuo had a beautiful and cheerful appearance. Natsuo, when did you arrive? Ayako was a little confused. Oh, when I saw a pregnant woman suddenly leaving quietly, I was a bit worried, so I followed you here. Natsuo smiled slightly. Otherwise, with your mediocre skills, how could you have come here without any problems? You've been following me all this time. Ayako opened her mouth, her eyes filled with surprise. Is this still the ordinary Achiha who was thought to have escaped from the enemy's assassination by luck, and only had the strength of a Chunin? Although she was affected by her pregnancy, she was still an elite Chunin. All the way, she hadn't noticed at all. But after the surprise, Ayako suddenly realized the current situation. No, Natsuo, listen to my explanation. She suddenly became flustered, as if she had been caught in an affair, and hurriedly said, I came here because... I am, but suddenly she was stuck and speechless, because she didn't know how to explain it well. Or did she even need to give some explanation? The last said cheer her, huh? Orochimaru completely ignored Aoko's panic, and looked at Natsuo with great interest. You hid yourself well enough, but you were careless to show yourself to me for the sake of a woman. This is truly a treasure bestowed upon me by heaven. His eyes were filled with excitement. Suddenly, a figure rushed towards Natsuo from the side. At a glance, Aiko recognized the person, Orochimaru's assistant, and her superior in charge of the intelligence, Yakushi Kabuto. He was an elite jonin. Yakushi Kabuto approached almost instantly, holding a kunai, 
heading straight for Natsuo. Natsuo, be careful Ayako instinctively shouted trying to intervene. But with her strength, she could only manage to shout out these few words, her body unable to move in time. She watched as Yakushi Kabuto's kunai was about to fall on Natsuo. At this moment, Natsuo laughed. His smile was full of disdain. The next second, a flash of silver shimmered. Yakushi Kabuto's face changed drastically. He spat out blood and was forced to retreat. A kunai was embedded in each of his limbs. Blood trickled down, staining his clothes. Natsuo's expression remained calm as he calmly said, it's impolite to randomly draw a kunai against others. I also dislike it when someone draws a weapon against me. This is a lesson. Before resorting to violence, think about the consequences. For a ninja, revealing a weapon means deciding life and death. Not everyone will give you a second chance. Ayako and Yakushi Kabuto's pupils contracted, in an instant. Just for that instant. This guy although Yakushi Kabuto's age and strength have not reached the peak, they barely meet the threshold of an elite jonin. But defeating an elite jonin in an instant. Even Orochimaru was stunned, with a hint of a meaningful smile on his face. It seems that under the shadow of my teacher, there is truly a formidable monster hidden. With this level, you and Chiha are all truly crazy. It's one thing for that young guy, Itachi, to defeat me at such a young age, but Fugaku, who made a name for himself on the battlefield, was suppressed by the third Hokage, and looked like a little cat. And now there's another Achiha who is clearly super strong, but thinks about having children every day. The Achiha clan truly are crazy. Shall we, Natsuo, you're really amazing, Orochimaru couldn't help but exclaim. Natsuo remained calm at this, Orochimaru's praise has no value to him. The real moving praise happens in the living room, in the kitchen, in the bathroom, on the couch. It is the words of his wives who praise him in those places that really moved him. Natsuo, you are so amazing. That's the praise that comes from the soul. Sorry, although I'm grateful to Orochimaru for giving me a wife, after all. The next generation of Ichiha is still in her belly. Natsuo glanced at Ayako. So, I have to take my wife back home. Your place here is not suitable for pregnant women. I'll wait for Orochimaru to arrange the accommodation, and then bring my wife home for a visit. You're here to take her away. Orochimaru smoked coldly. That's fine, she's just a pawn I casually arranged. If you want her, I'll give her to you. Ayako stood there, stiff. She understood that she had betrayed the Achiha clan, but Natsuo still wanted to take her home. And Orochimaru, whom she admired she bit her lip tears of shame streaming down her face. But Natsuo, relying on your own strength to come before me, this is not what a wise man would do. Orochimaru looked at Natsuo's body, a greedy look flashing in his eyes. As a farewell gift, I suggest you leave your body behind. In the next second, he suddenly opened his mouth. A snake head emerged from his mouth. The snake head opened its mouth, and a sharp sword appeared, stabbing towards Natsuo. At the same time, Orochimaru instantly released a large number of snakes from his sleeve, and they immediately headed offensively towards Natsuo. This sudden attack was swift and dangerous, the air filled with a dense killing intent, as if it could freeze the world. However, Natsuo just sighed lightly. In his eyes, the pattern of a spinning windmill moved rapidly. Manjekyo Sharingan technique. In the next second, Orochimaru? who was about to pounce, found that the whole world had changed. He appeared out of thin air in a space full of blood-red illusions, and his body was nailed to several large iron nails. In an instant, he was unable to move. Haven't you heard this saying? Natsuo calmly stared at him. Orochimaru, your techniques are meaningless in front of my Sharingan. Has Orochimaru heard this sentence before? He has heard it too many times. I would even remember him in death. Orochimaru, your techniques are useless in front of my Sharingan. It was what Atachi Ichiha said to him when he attacked him. Almost identical. And now, not only did he lose to Ichiha Atachi, but he also lost to Ichiha Natsuo. These eyes the legendary Manjekyo Sharingan Orochimaru gritted his teeth, his eyes filled with unrestrained resentment. I never expected that you would also possess the same eyes as Atachi. You've hidden it well. Did you awaken them when you learned about the night of Ichiha clan massacre? It's amazing how you claimed to have insufficient talent, and entrusted the task of avenging the Ichiha to Sasuke. It was all a cover-up, wasn't it? To think that Itachi's little brother became your scapegoat. Orochimaru's voice was filled with anger and humiliation. In front of the Sharingan, he seemed to recall the humiliation he suffered when he attacked Itachi. Natsuo remained expressionless. Although Orochimaru's words didn't quite match reality, it didn't matter. My affairs have nothing to do with you, Natsuo calmly said. But Orochimaru, you still have value to me. In the next second, he blinked his eyes, and the surging power in his eyes quickly dissipated, and the Manjekyo Sharingan gradually disappeared, returning to normal eyes. Orochimaru could move now. Natsuo had released the Jinjutsu. He furrowed his brows, and the anger on his face gradually dissipated. What do you want? Orochimaru took a deep breath and regained his composure. He was actually a very calm person. If it weren't for the deep wounds inflicted by Itachi in the past, he wouldn't have become so obsessed with the Sharingan, and ultimately in the original plot, 
it wouldn't have become a stepping stone for Azuzi. Send your Hashirama's cells and Jugo's cells, Natsuo said directly, without any politeness. One referred to the special body of the sage and the other to the sage mode. He didn't need them himself. With the system's help, he could slowly accumulate everything conveniently and safely, without taking any risks. But these things could greatly enhance a person's potential. In other words, his women could benefit from them. Of course, Natsuo didn't think that just because he had gained the upper hand, he could easily kill Orochimaru or control him. There was no one in the ninja world more difficult to kill than Orochimaru. Not to mention the hidden trump card of the cursed seal, just based on this confrontation, Natsuo didn't think he could defeat him. Orochimaru is a veteran ninja. After Itachi attacked his weaknesses and was hit unilaterally, would Orochimaru really not remember it? nor would he have defenses against attacks on his own weaknesses. How could that be possible? In fact, in the original plot, during the battle between Itachi against Sasuke, when the latter releases the chakra that was holding Orochimaru inside his body, Orochimaru emerges with his Yamata no Jutsu on Itachi, but the latter did not simply use his visual prowess and Jinjutsu to crush him like the first time. Obviously, this weakness had already been somewhat compensated for or guarded against. Hashirama's cells and Jugo's cells. Orochimaru furrowed his brows and looked at Natsuo strangely. You really know a lot, don't you? Hashirama's cells are inherently secretive, and only a few people in Kanoha, such as Danzo and the third Hokage know about them. But it is not impossible for him to know them either because there are other ways to find out about Hashirama's cells. But it hasn't been long since I acquired Jugo's cells. How does Natsuo know? Sure, but you'll have to wait. Hashirama's cells are here, but Jugo's cells are in another research lab. I'll have someone bring them. Orochimaru nodded without bargaining. Then I'll wait. I have time anyway. Natsuo smiled faintly. He casually grabbed a chair and sat down. Orochimaru fell silent for a moment, and began contacting his subordinates. Yakushi Kabuto also gritted his teeth and started treating his injuries. On the other hand, Ayako was confused by this series of changes. When she finally reacted, things had already turned out like this. After hesitating for a moment, she eventually approached Natsuo. She massaged his shoulders, rubbed his legs, and apologized softly. Even her tone and actions carried a hint of seduction. If she wasn't pregnant now, they might have gone further. Natsuo accepted it all without saying a word about forgiving her. A woman who has betrayed once will betray again. He won't give her a second chance. Once the child is born and the mission is complete, what do I care about her feelings? But it has to be said that the Kinoichi trained by Orochimaru is indeed unique with a great taste and unquestionable skills. She knows how to capture a man's interest. Natsuo is also a normal man, and he has been abstaining for a few days because of this pursuit. It's inevitable that he would have some reactions. Seeing this, Ayako increased her efforts. She knew that men find it difficult to stay angry in certain physical states. With a little effort maybe, oh, it seems that this is my mistake. Orochimaru suddenly spoke, his voice full of laughter. Natsuo-kun has come to my territory. How can I not entertain you properly? He turned his head and gave a few instructions to Yakushi Kabuto. Yakushi Kabuto's expression was strange, but he still followed the orders. Not long after, he returned with several good-looking Kinoichis. These female ninjas all had good looks, each with their own unique characteristics. In terms of strength, there was even a jonin and two special jonin among them. It was clear that Orochimaru was not unaware of Natsuo's preferences. As soon as this group of attractive women approached, they gathered around Natsuo. They lightly massaged his shoulders, rubbed his legs, and a faint, elegant fragrance filled the air. His body was surrounded by softness. Natsuo's expression became strange. Can Orochimaru really stoop to this level? So, should he accept this kindness or refuse it? After all, they were fighting just a few minutes ago, and now accepting this kindness, Natsuo felt a bit conflicted. It's not good that he forgives him so easily, but rejecting Orochimaru's goodwill would also be a disappointment. This might be the only time Orochimaru has done something like this in his life. It seems that I can only accept it silently to accurately express my feelings. The esteemed Sanan, Orochimaru personally involved in human trafficking. Natsuo was shocked. He took a deep breath and sneered. Are you trying to seduce me with your beauty? Am I the kind of person who can't resist temptation? The women all approached seductively. Lord Natsuo, Lord Natsuo, your body is so strong. My lord, how do you feel? The soft touch occasionally transmitted through the movement of their bodies, and the pleasant musky scent filled his nose. Am I the kind of person who can't resist temptation? Yes, I am. So please tempt me a few more times, sisters. After all, Orochimaru has reached such a level... How can I not give him face? Orochimaru chuckled lightly. Natsuo-kun, don't worry. This is just my compensation, and I also want to make a deal with you. What kind of deal? Natsuo struggled to squeeze his face out from the pile of softness. It's human trafficking. Orochimaru chuckled. I remember that the Uchiha clan is quite wealthy, 
and you have offered quite generous treatment to the Kinoichis who marry into the Ichiha clan. To be honest, even I am a little envious of the rewards. He licked his lips lightly, a hint of greed flashing in his eyes. Natsuo said, Sorry, I'm a man and I'm only interested in women. I'm not interested in men, but thanks anyway. Arachimaru. Hum, even I, the worthy Sanin, don't like men. Oh, wait, the body I'm using now seems to belong to a female ninja. But that's not important. I will use the Kinoichis under my command in exchange for Natsuo-kun's financial support. Orochimaru didn't hide anything and said directly, I can provide at least jonin level female ninjas, who are guaranteed to be physically healthy, have good looks, and are in their prime reproductive age. I don't need the Ichiha clan's ninjutsu, but in return, I hope to obtain a large amount of funds. Doing research requires a lot of money. In Natsuo's previous life, several countries invested billions in funds into research, but sometimes there was no progress at all. Although Orochimaru himself is a top scientist who can ensure research results, the required funds cannot appear out of thin air. And currently preparing for the establishment of a Togika, although the village will generate some income in the later stages, it is clear that in the initial stage, it requires a lot of investment. He needs money, and the Achiha happen to be wealthy. As for the price to pay with Orochimaru's abilities, isn't it easy to deceive a few small ninja clans Kinoichis? Moreover, he can offer the ninjutsu that the ninjas need the most as compensation. This is a win-win situation. He had thought about this before, and wanted to accept the mission of bearing children for the rebirth of the Achiha clan. The drawback was that it could only be done by Kanoha ninjas. In addition, the construction of a togaka also requires manpower, so he temporarily put it aside. However, now that Natsuo has come, we can make this deal. Natsuo pondered for a moment. The jonin Orochimaru provided is probably the weakest kind of jonin from a small country. It is a disgrace to be a jonin in terms of ninjutsu, chinjutsu, and tajutsu. But they are still jonin. Although the Achiha clan has spent a lot of money, there are still very few jonin level female ninja who have accepted the mission. We can discuss the details. Natsuo was tempted. Three hours later, Natsuo left Orochimaru's underground base with Aoko and two special jonin. The two female special jonin were the goods for this transaction. After looking at them, it seemed that the two of them did not resist the fate of being married to him. One of them couldn't help but steal glances at Natsuo's handsome face with a hint of joy in her eyes. After all, Natsuo is a true tall, rich, and handsome man. With a prestigious reputation, abundant wealth, strength equal to Orochimaru's, and this sunny and handsome face. How could Kinoichis not be moved? The group headed towards Kinoha. But compared to Aeko's hurried escape before, it now felt more like a leisurely outing with no rush and occasional stops to admire the scenery along the way. Natsuo was not in a hurry to return to the village. The wooden clone he left there could temporarily take care of most things. At the same time, he also contacted a ninja cat to let the wood clone prepare things in the village. After all, except for Aoko, who was originally a spy who had infiltrated Kinoha, the remaining two did not have a Kinoha ID. All of this required the wood clone to make proper preparations in the village before they could return. The group enjoyed their journey, exploring mountains and rivers. When passing through the border between two countries, they suddenly discovered that both Kusagika and Takikika were at war. Natsuo took the opportunity to observe for a while. During the last Great Ninja War, he hadn't even graduated from the ninja school yet. He found war to be quite intriguing. The female ninjas, on the other hand, were much less curious than Natsuo. The small ninja clans had experienced too much hardship and displacement. That's why they were so delighted to marry into the Achiha clan, and become stable and wealthy housewives. However, whether it was Natsuo or the female ninjas who had become part of the family in the past few days, they didn't feel surprised by the sudden outbreak of war between the two countries. The ninja village system has only been around for a little over 60 years, and there have already been three great ninja wars. Roughly one war every 20 years. And that's only the large-scale wars involving the five major ninja villages. The small-scale wars in the small ninja villages are too numerous to count. However, as they continued to watch, Natsuo suddenly frowned. It seems that something is not right. The injured Kusagika ninjas are recovering so quickly. Could it be his eyes instantly lit up? Although he had experienced fewer wars, Natsuo was still a cage-level expert. The Sharingan brought him much stronger visual perception than ordinary people. In his opinion, although the number of people on both sides was similar and their strength was comparable, Kusagika was not a match for the Takigika at all. Although both were small ninja villages, Takigika has a Jinchuriki. Takigika was once arrogant, second only to the five great ninja villages and was known as the Sixth Great Ninja Village. Otherwise, the first Hokage would not have given a tail beast to Takigika. Although Takigika was only arrogant for a while and then declined, they wouldn't lose to Kusagika. The result was completely opposite to his judgment. Kusagika was actually chasing after Takigika. After careful observation, Natsuo finally discovered the problem. His judgment was actually correct. 
There were more injured ninjas from Kusagika than Takigika, but miraculously, those injured Kusagika ninjas would soon return to the battlefield unharmed, gradually gaining the upper hand for the Kusagika. This almost exaggerated medical effect, if his memory served him right, should be Kusagika Field Hospital. The medical ninjas of Kusagika were busy at work. Dan, another injured person, after giving him an IV, send him in. Come and bandage him up, and then, there's no need for so much trouble, just send him in. You fool. Do you really think that woman's chakra is infinite? This war will continue for a while. We can't let her waste chakra unnecessarily. What's the harm in wasting it? After all, she's just a disposable asset of a Kusagika, and doesn't she have a daughter? Although there were many medical ninjas wearing white coats here, if you look closely, their treatment procedures were very uniform. First, they would provide general treatment, such as bandaging and administering IVs, and perform emergency procedures. Then they would use a cart to transport the injured person into a room. In that room was a woman with red hair. The woman appeared to be around 30 years old, with a somewhat handsome appearance and a good figure but her face was pale. Her red hair, which should have been fiery, was now somewhat dim. An injured person was brought in, and the accompanying medical ninja said, All right, it's time for you to do your part. The words were so cold and didn't sound like something you would say to a person. But the woman just glanced at it with a somewhat lifeless gaze, and raised an arm covered in bite marks. The medical ninja roughly grabbed the woman's arm and pulled it towards the injured person's mouth. The injured person also opened his mouth without hesitation, ready to bite down. And at this moment the Yuzumaki clan, able to heal others by biting her and absorbing their chakra. You guys are using her as a power bank. Truly a wasted treasure. A light sigh came. The first one to react and make a defensive move was surprisingly the weak Yuzumaki clan woman. The medical ninja and the injured person, on the other hand, was stunned for a moment before suddenly waking up and looking at the man who appeared beside them, not knowing when. Who are you? This is the territory of Kusagika. Could it be a surprise attack from the Komahagika? The Kusagika ninja said a series of things in a row, but Natsuo, as if he had heard something scandalous, made a contemptuous gesture. He then reached out and grabbed the Yuzumaki woman's arm, and looked in shock at the large number of bite marks. With the incredible stamina and vitality of the Yuzumaki clan to still have injuries of this degree, it must be the result of old wounds not healing and new ones appearing. Truly, what a waste. Natsuo sighed softly. In the original plot, this kind of ability made Karen play an important role even in the final battle. Also, how many life and death crises has Azuzi survived by relying on this ability? And yet, in Kusagika, it's used like that? Natsuo shook his head repeatedly. This ability to rapidly heal others is comparable to Tsunade at this time and the future Haruno Sakura. Even without considering the Yuzumaki clan's other powerful abilities, such as the adamantine sealing chains and the Kagura mines, I, just considering this healing effect, it should not be used on ordinary ninjas like this. Its true application should be specifically for serving certain high-level experts to ensure they can complete more important missions. Kusagika truly squandering a treasure. What is your name, member of the Yuzumaki clan? Natsuo asked. The Yuzumaki woman opened her mouth but did not speak. At this moment, the Kusagika ninjas next to him, although they could not understand everything he said, did understand the phrase Azuzi survived by relying on this ability. The medical ninja's expression changed drastically. Are you perhaps a survivor of the Yuzumaki clan? Is the Yuzumaki clan here to save her? If Azuzi also knows someone who can use this ability, then they must also know other members of the Yuzumaki clan. Someone is trying to take away a blood bag. He shouted loudly, his voice pissing like a woman's. The injured people beside him also gritted their teeth and shouted that they wanted to join the fight. However, you're all so noisy. Natsuo said softly, forming hand seals. Fire release. Great fire annihilation a powerful flame surged out, engulfing the medical ninja and the injured people in an instant. Then, it continued to spread outward burning fiercely and turning into a sea of flames. The sea of flames extended, covering several miles in all directions. The entire battlefield hospital of Kusagika was engulfed in flames. Cries of agony filled the surroundings, countless flaming figures struggling and rolling. Although the noise was loud, the atmosphere was strangely quiet. The Yuzumaki woman stood there in a daze, subconsciously looking around, her field of vision filled with crimson. What is your name, member of the Yuzumaki clan? Natsuo asked again. Yoko, my name is Yuzumaki Yoko. Yuzumaki Yoko opened her mouth and finally spoke. Natsuo smiled, a smile that was obscured by the flames, but still carried a hint of gentleness. Yoko, would you like to come with me? Although I can't say that you won't have to pay any price. I should be able to give you a stable home. Yoko stood there in a daze her eyes glancing at the sea of fire around her, finally letting out a bitter smile. Do I have any other choice? As a survivor of the Yuzumaki clan, she already found herself in an awkward position in Kusagika, constantly being the target of suspicion by the shinobi of Kusagika. Now that everyone in the field hospital was dead, she was the only one left. 
she would be directly labeled by the shinobi of Kusagika as a traitor, and who knows what they would do to her. However, my daughter is still in camp of Kusagika, not far from here. Can I take my daughter with us? Yuzumaki Yoko pleaded, her eyes fixed on Natsuo. If you don't take my daughter with us, there's no point in me staying alive. If she couldn't take her daughter Karen with her, she might as well die here and save herself from the suspicion by the shinobi of Kusagika. For her daughter, she was not afraid of death. Natsuo smiled slightly and said, I understand. Yuzumaki Yoko looked anxious. For most people, although Kusagika was not as powerful as the five great shinobi countries, it was still considered a powerful ninja village. Could this unknown man, although impressive in his actions, really save her daughter from the camp of Kusagika? And even if he did save her daughter, what would this man ask of them? Would it be more excessive than Shinobis of Kusagika? Yuzumaki Yoko didn't know, but she had no choice. Unless she was willing to end her own life here and let Karen, at such a young age, be used by the shinobi of Kusagika and go through the torment she was currently experiencing, she would always struggle to survive. Karen was located in the camp behind the field hospital. It was clear that the shinobi of Kusagika regarded Yuzumaki Yoko as nothing more than a disposable item, otherwise they wouldn't need to bring Karen, who was young and had no combat power, to the battlefield. In other words, they were waiting for Yoko's death, so that Karen could take her place. This was also the reason why Yuzumaki Yoko, who realized that the situation was hopeless, immediately accepted Natsuo's invitation. However, what surprised Yuzumaki Yoko was that when Natsuo saw the camp of Kusagika, he walked over confidently. This Yuzumaki Yoko opened her mouth, shrunk her neck, and her worried expression deepened. She hid herself and stayed far away. Once Natsuo failed, she would immediately run back to the field hospital and burn herself to death. Although it would result in Karen being used in her place, at least she could stay alive. This was the only thing she could do for Karen at the moment. Natsuo walked confidently, and when he reached the entrance of the camp, two shinobis came towards him. Hey kid, who are you swish? A gleaming blade flashed. Natsuo held a kunai and stabbed it straight at them. His movements were fluid and casual. It wasn't until the kunai pierced the chest of one of the shinobis that the other person exclaimed, Who are you? How dare you hurt a shinobi from Kusagika? Natsuo sighed lightly, No, I didn't hurt a shinobi from Kusagika. I'm killing them. In the next second, he slashed the kunai upwards. The chest was split open, and blood gushed out from the heart and lungs. The nearby shinobis was stunned and quickly shouted, Alert! We're under attack! Under the hoarse shout, the camp, which was already on high alert, quickly reacted. Countless shinobis poured out from the main gate. Who is it? Is it an attack from Takigika? Kill him! Just him! Impossible! There must be others! Be careful, everyone! A series of loud roars sounded. Meanwhile, Natsuo casually strolled around the camp as if it were empty. He held a kunai in one hand, his steps light and graceful, like a gentle dance. In his pupils, the three tomo of the Sharingan rotated slowly. His movements were neither hurried nor slow, yet he could accurately slice open the throats of every enemy. Wherever he went, people fell to the ground. No wonder the dance king at Chihamadara always said, Do you want to dance too? With such an absolute difference in strength and the ability to see through all enemy attacks with the Sharingan, isn't it like dancing on a dance floor? The enemy is practically cooperating like dance partners, sending their vital points straight to my kunai. The terrifying aspect of the Sharingan is just that simple. After seeing through everything about the enemy, it can achieve this casually described yet highly effective result. It doesn't even require much physical stamina. Natsuo sighed in his heart, but his movements didn't slow down. Like cutting butter with a hot knife, he forcefully opened a large gap within the Kusagika camp's defenses, and continued to penetrate deeper. The shinobi of Kusagika shouted in panic, Damn it! Who are you? These eyes could you be a Chiharatachi, the rogue ninja of Kinoha? Well, among the only two adults in the Achiha clan, Natsuo is known for having a harem, while Atachi is known for wiping out the clan. Obviously, such formidable combat power should belong to that man named Achiha Atachi. No problem. Natsuo nodded in his heart, then sent a kunai to send that idiot who was randomly guessing to meet the Sage of Six Parts. He continued to walk straight towards the back of the camp. Although he was not very good as a sensory ninja, Yuzumaki Yoko had already informed him of the approximate location. Simple and straightforward, just kill them all. In fact, before Natsuo had killed his way there, the Shinobis of Kusagika were on the verge of collapse. This kind of massacre done so casually is much more terrifying than a frantic assault. Because no matter how many people from their side rushed over, they would all be easily devoured by the killing intent of Natsuo. It's as if it can never be filled. And at this moment a middle-aged man with a square face stepped forward. The shinobis of Kusagika seemed to see hope, gritted their teeth, gathered their courage, and finally didn't completely flee. The middle-aged man looked at the shinobis who died in battle around him and stared fiercely at Natsuo with his bloodshot eyes. You have such strength at such a young age, indeed extraordinary. In the voice of the square-faced man, there seemed to be a hidden storm. He slowly tightened his grip on the kunai and assumed a battle posture. I don't care if you're a Chiha Atachi or whoever. Since you dare to attack my Kusagaka, 
I won't let you leave. Today, I will avenge my fallen comrades for the sacrifices of my comrades for PFFT. Before he could finish speaking, Natsuo's figure had already appeared in front of him. He directly hit the middle-aged man's forehead, crushing his head. And like a burst watermelon, he splashed red and white all over the ground. So weak, yet so many words. Natsuo was quite puzzled, completely unable to understand why this guy didn't prepare properly and had so many meaningless words. He couldn't be bothered with such a foolish person, and directly pissed through the Kusagaka's camp. The camp of Kusagaka completely collapsed. Until Natsuo reached Karen's side, he didn't even know that the trash he casually killed was actually the leader of Kusagaka. He just looked at the somewhat shy girl and smiled. Found you, Yuzumaki Karen. Kusagaka didn't really value Karen. The desperate shinobi of Kusagaka didn't even think about taking her. So, Natsuo didn't have to make any effort, and quickly found the main character. It was a timid little lowly. Her short red hair just touching her shoulders, her round little face, and wearing black framed glasses. She looked like an easy target to bully. Karen shrank into a corner, trembling all over. Especially when she heard the sound of Natsuo pushing open the door, her whole body trembled even more, extremely afraid. It was impossible to think that in the future, according to the original plot, she would have the fierce impulse to attack the Ten Tails. Your mother is waiting for you, come with me. Natsuo revealed a gentle smile. According to the original plot, in the future, she would most likely be the strongest woman in the Yuzumaki clan. Using the adamantine sealing chains, she was able to seal a tail B single-handedly in addition to possessing maximum cage level combat power. Well, to put it more bluntly, Natsuo was lusting after her bloodline. The only problem was that Karen was only one month older than Sasuke. But it wasn't a big problem. Cage level Kinoichi was so rare that Natsuo had even considered laying the groundwork with little Sakura from now on. But then he thought that if he did that and with Azuzi's character, he probably wouldn't marry anyone. So, he abandoned this idea. Plus Sakura didn't possess any bloodline. However, Karen had a clear path for future development, and had one of the most complete bloodlines in the Yuzumaki clan. With these conditions he could afford to wait and cultivate his wife himself. This is a win-win situation. Come with me. Natsuo smiled and extended his hand towards her, then touched her hair. It was unclear whether it was because of her young age, or because she had been well protected by her mother. Karen's hair was very smooth and shiny, in stark contrast to her mother's dull and yellowish hair color. Perhaps she sensed Natsuo's goodwill. Karen hesitated for a moment, but ultimately reached out her hand, and tightly held Natsuo's hand. He pulled Karen along, walking out of the room as if taking a stroll. There were still some mangled corpses of the Kusagaka shinobi on the road, with flesh and blood scattered everywhere. From time to time, they would encounter a brainless Kusagaka shinobi who would attack them, and Natsuo dealt with them easily. Karen blinked her eyes, her eyes showing no trace of fear, but rather a hint of satisfaction. Kusagaka was extremely xenophobic and filled with a strange sense of superiority. Countless shinobi of Kusagaka would treat the mother and daughter with disdain every day, insulting them as parasites of Kusagaka and saying that it was their honor to sacrifice their lives for Kusagaka. Although Karen was in prison for most of the day, she could still hear the arrogant voices unique to Kusagaka all the time, as if dying for Kusagaka was an honor for them. And now, those arrogant shinobis of Kusagaka were like trash, casually killed by Natsuo and thrown aside. Not even worth a glance. Karen trembled all over, but it wasn't out of fear, but excitement. Her legs tightened, her breathing became heavy, and her body involuntarily leaned towards Natsuo. When the two of them walked out of the Kusagaka camp, Karen practically pressed her whole body against Natsuo, her mouth emitting heavy breaths, and her expression was the classic expression of a nympho. Natsuo, in my past life, many people thought Karen was a pervert. Now, I can tell you this is true. Such a young child actually able to make such an expression, even he was a bit uncomfortable. But this seems convenient for my future operations. I'll just pretend this is normal. Natsuo shrugged with indifference in his heart. He brought Karen to find Yuzumaki Yoko. The two, mother and daughter, hugged tightly, as if they would be permanently separated if they let go for a second. Mother, woo woo, it's okay. Karen, mom will be with you from now on. The mother and daughter cried and then laughed, the tears already beginning to wet the ground. Natsuo shook his head, ignoring the reunion of the mother and daughter, turned his head, and used a few fire-release jutsus to burn the Kusagika camp clean. Before, he didn't use large-scale ninjutsu because he was worried about accidentally injuring Karen. Now that there is no need to worry, he naturally has to clean up this rubbish. If you ask which ninja village in the ninja world is one of the most disgusting, they would probably all give the same answer. Kusagaka? After he leisurely returned, it seemed that the mother and daughter had finished crying. Yuzumaki Yoko wiped away her tears and said, Lord Natsuo, let's leave here quickly. I heard that the leader of the Kusagaka is nearby. I don't know when he will return although Lord Natsuo, you're not afraid of him. There's no need to provoke trouble. Just in case, let's leave first. That's the leader of Kusagaka, the strongest man in the Kusagaka. Even if Yuzumaki Yoko saw Natsuo single-handedly take on a camp, she still had some worries. But Natsuo shook his head and said, Both of you are not in good physical condition, so let's walk slowly. 
But if someone catches up with us, Yoko's face was full of worry as she spoke. Natsuo remained calm and said, it doesn't matter. I will take action. Upon hearing this, Karen's eyes lit up. Good so cool. But the leader of Kusagika. If my perception is correct, isn't he the guy who blabbered on and then was instantly defeated by you? When Lord Natsuo took me out of the camp, I even saw his corpse. Karen lowered her head slightly, tightly hugging Natsuo's arm. Her face pressed against his arm, gently sniffing his scent. Her face was filled with sweetness or should I say obsession. So, you're Ichiha Natsuo, the one known as the shame of the Ichiha. The one who paid a considerable sum of money to have a child. Yuzumaki Yoko covered her mouth, looking surprised. It could be seen that Natsuo's reputation had already spread from the fire country to the grass country. And even Yuzumaki Yoko, who was in a semi-house arrest state, had heard of it. Mom, what does paying a considerable sum of money to have a child mean? Asked little Karen curiously. Yuzumaki Yoko felt a bit embarrassed and pulled Karen closer. It's something adults do. You don't need to know. Karen fed. The several wives sent over by Orochimaru beside them also covered their mouths and giggled. They had also heard of Natsuo's reputation, but even if they were a bit slow, they knew that a man who could have an equal conversation with Orochimaru-sama couldn't possibly be the so-called shame of the Achiha clan. Leaving that aside, just based on the achievements of annihilating the Kusagaka's stronghold earlier, even the elites of the five great shinobi countries might not be able to accomplish it. But Natsuo had done it so casually. So, what do you want me to do? Yuzumaki Yoko took a deep breath. Whether Natsuo was the shame of the Achiha or the glory of the Achiha had nothing to do with her. She just wanted to know what Natsuo wanted them to do. If it was something extremely dangerous, it might be better to stay in Kusagika. Natsuo calmly said, to strengthen the Achiha, I am continuously taking wives in order to have children with sufficient strength. So, I need the bloodline of powerful female ninjas. Of course, the rewards are generous, my wives will be treated as noble ladies, and the rewards will be plentiful. I don't need you to participate in battles, nor do I need you to undertake any dangerous missions. As long as you don't betray the Achiha clan, no one can harm you. All you need to do is take care of your health, obediently give birth to children, and take good care of them. Other than that, you don't need to worry about anything. These words were not only addressed to the mother and daughter of the Yuzumaki clan, but also to the several female ninjas sent by Orochimaru. Natsuo didn't need Kinochi to fight for the Achiha clan, because no matter how strong a Kinochi was, she couldn't match him. At the same time, he didn't need the female ninjas to do any work, because all the work could be done by hiring other employees, and dangerous tasks could be entrusted to Akatsuki. As long as they were willing to have children, then no problem would be a problem. Yes, the several women solemnly replied in unison. Even Yuzumaki Yoko was no exception. Having experienced countless hardships, she knew too well the preciousness of a stable and peaceful environment. Because the mother and daughter of the Yuzumaki clan joined Midway, Natsuo had to send another message to his clone in the village, asking him to create two more identities. And Natsuo himself bought a large amount of hair dye for the mother and daughter of the Yuzumaki clan. The red hair of the Yuzumaki clan was quite rare, and he didn't know if in Kanoha, he could find a third red-haired person. It was too easy to be recognized. The Achiha clan itself is prone to taboos, and if they gather with the Yuzumaki clan, the best candidates for Jinchuriki, it's hard to say that the third Hokage and others won't have any ulterior motives. Natsuo is not afraid, but there's no need to waste energy on a few old men. Wouldn't it be better to waste it on beautiful girls? Anyway, dyeing hair is not difficult. After a few days of sightseeing and buying some clothes for a few women, Natsuo took them to the Achiha clan residence. After eating their favorite pork cutlet rice, and buying some toys like windmills for Karen. Although he possessed the strength of a cage level, Natsuo still struggled for a while, before he finished settling everyone into the Achiha clan residence. By the way, these women are not ninjas. Although Kanoha village does not prohibit outsiders from entering, unfamiliar ninjas are still too conspicuous. Including the mother and daughter of the Yuzumaki clan, everyone entered Kanoha as civilians, and then Natsuo directly created a chance encounter using a drunken post-drinking brawl as an excuse, and reluctantly brought the women home. Upon learning of this, the people of Kanoha all expressed their admiration. The young master of the Achiha clan is really a playboy. How envious oh, no, this is a loss of morality. Natsuo has become the lifelong enemy of Kanoha Shinobi, but the women defended him one after another. Lord Natsuo is a responsible man. Look even for accidents that happen after drinking, he is willing to take responsibility. Unlike you bunch of useless men. And then they subtly hinted, Lord Natsuo, please bring me along next time you drink. I have a low alcohol tolerance and won't know anything when I'm drunk. But Natsuo ignored them. During the past few days when he was away from home, his real body was absent, and his clones refused the enthusiastic invitations of his wives with excuses like not feeling well today or feeling tired. The wood clone's ability was quite good, except for Kikuzu, who knew the truth. Many other women truly believed that Natsuo was not feeling well that day. After all, Natsuo had indeed been very busy before, so it was normal for him to want to rest for a while. 
But if he continued to rest like this, even with this drunken brawl, the women would think that Natsuo had been overworked, and his body was completely exhausted. Can this work? Which man can tolerate this kind of humiliation? Of course, Natsuo had to fight back and kill them all to prove his strength. So it began with a touch, a smile, a shared moment. Rhythmically they took steps, pulsating movements. Intertwined fingers, bodies moving in time. Hearts beating with their internal rhyme in every breath, every step, every heartbeat. With each twist and turn they felt complete, succumbing to the hypnotic trance. Lovers lost in the eternal dance of life. So, there was a continuous dance that lasted for several days. If it weren't for the Sharingan's technique armor no Yuzum, even as a cage-level expert, he wouldn't have been able to hold on. Finally, he had a day off today and could chat with his future wife Karen and play games. When he was preparing to give himself a chance to rest at night, a graceful figure slipped into Natsuo's room. Lord Natsuo, I've come to fulfill our agreement. Yuzumaki Yoko blushed and spoke softly, the bloodline of Yuzumaki and Ichiha. I will do my best. She gently took off her clothes and got in. Natsuo, what should he say at this time? Madam, I am actually wishing for your daughter's bloodline. Did you misunderstand something? Natsuo really didn't intend to have anything with Yoko. After all, he had always been targeting Karen, a girl with cage-level potential, whose strength was not inferior to that of one of the main female characters, Sakura. She could be considered one of the most talented supporting characters in the Naruto series. Considering the Yuzumaki clan's bloodline bonus, she was even more meaningful to Natsuo than the main female female character, Sakura. But upon feeling that soft body, he no longer had the strength to say, Madam, actually my goal is your daughter's bloodline. And the first time Natsuo saw Yuzumaki Yoko, she was completely different. She was originally thin, with dry, dull red hair, lifeless eyes, and she only became a little more active when she saw her daughter. Her body was covered in bite marks. But now, after several days of recuperation, her body became well proportioned, her hair showed a hint of shine, and her eyes carried a mix of shyness and determination. The vitality of the Yuzumaki clan was simply astonishing. Just with normal rest and eating sufficient and nutritious food, she quickly showed signs of recovery. The marks on her body also faded a lot. Although they couldn't be completely eliminated for now, with sporadic embellishments, they actually look more interesting. Yuzumaki Yoko seemed to notice Natsuo's gaze on her scars. Yoko's eyes dimmed revealing a trace of inferiority. But she took the initiative to get closer and then crawled into the blanket. She was in the most exquisite anguish astride Natsuo at that moment, sweating and feeling an impetuous volcanic tension at its peak within her. Wanting to explode her sweetest self on him, she was in heaven and hell at the same time. And when he finished she lay on the bed, breathless, waiting to regain feeling in her legs. Another person who couldn't sleep well was Yui Kuronai. Damn Natsuo, he really has the energy. Yuhi Kuronai cursed angrily, addicted to women. It seems like he doesn't have a future. Yuhi Kuronai was very angry. She had been in the Achiha clan for a while now, so naturally she knew about Natsuo's lifestyle. But now it's a different situation than before. During the day, when Sasuke was leaping and running on the walls, he accidentally stomped a hole in her house, which was currently under repair. Although the Achiha clan had other vacant rooms, Yukino felt apologetic and voluntarily suggested sharing a room with Yuhi Kuronai. Since they were all women, Yuhi Kuronai agreed. However, as the default main wife, Yukino's room naturally was very close to Natsuo's room. The result was damn Natsuo, we agreed to rest today. Yuhi Kuronai was extremely embarrassed and angry. As a sensor type Jonin, her perception ability was exceptionally high and her hearing was quite good. But sometimes, she really didn't want this level of perception. Are you going to let people sleep or not? The next day, Natsuo woke up refreshed. The only problem was that Yuhi Kuronai's eyes seemed red, as if she hadn't slept well. But that was a minor issue, and Natsuo ignored Yuhi Kuronai. Karen seemed even more active than before. Although she also hadn't slept all night, the physique of the Yuzumaki clan allowed her to remain energetic. She behaved fully like a girl her age, acting cute, trying to give him a girl with glasses mo, asking Natsuo for delicious and fun things. She wanted piggyback rides, she wanted hugs, although Yuzumaki Yoko looked helpless, Natsuo wouldn't refuse. As one of Natsuo's most talented potential wives at the moment, it was only natural to build a good relationship with Karen. Natsuo carefully asked Yoko at night, and Yoko calmly stated that she only had the ability of physical healing. As for the techniques that Karen had shown, such as adamantine sealing chains and Kagura Mind's Eye, she knew the training steps, and remembered the content of the techniques. But she hadn't learned any of them. Thinking about it, it's understandable. If she learned them all, she would be a cage-level powerhouse. And she wouldn't be treated as a blood bag by those trash ninjas from Kusagaka. Karen's talent was much stronger than Yoko's. I still have to continue working hard. Natsuo encouraged himself. My current small goal is to get Yuzumaki Yoko and the few Kinochi sent by Orochimaru pregnant. Enko is truly a ninja genius, although in the original work she developed very late, 
because she was once Orochimaru's disciple, and was restricted in Kanoha. But now that she has fully unleashed her talent with the support of the Achiha clan, she actually began to display additional talents, such as those of a sensor-type ninja. Although Natsuo tried to hide it, but he still actually discovered the identity of the Kinoichi under Orochimaru. Did she smell the snake scent on these women? She almost attacked them on the spot, wanting to vent her anger on this group of people. In the end, Natsuo managed to suppress her in time and persuaded her, saying that the Achiha clan accepts all, regardless of spies. Even if they are truly Orochimaru's people, he can use his heart to influence them and make them our allies. He also added some words like maybe these female ninjas can help you deal with Orochimaru in the future. Seeing in her expression that she still wanted to continue with the topic, I had to convince her with more forceful means. I pushed her against the door in a passionate hug. She was wearing a white dress shirt with a black tactical vest. The primitive musky smell began to permeate the room. I grabbed her waist while she pulled hard on a lock of my black hair. A woman now, releasing her innocence. Her balmy breath variegated with mine. I slide around her neck kissing her spine. Starting at her top, I kiss front back, her voice purely moaned. The atmosphere intensified. It's just that we got lost while we looked into each other's eyes. While the firmament split in two and the earth trembled, the sheet was dragged down. We fought only for air while our bodies were covered in sweat. Her nails cling to my body. It was a night we will not forget, one in which he barely managed to suppress Anko's doubts about Orochimaru's spies. In the following period of time, Natsuo worked tirelessly and devoted all his energy to the revival of the Ichiha clan. Finally, two months later Anko was the first to get pregnant. Then, several jonin sent by Orochimaru also gradually became pregnant. Natsuo was greatly relieved by this. Not only that, but several children were also born during this period. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 59, you gain chakra plus three, win release. Vacuum sphere. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 48, you gain mental power plus two, fire release. Fire dragon flame bullet. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 61, you gain mental power plus four. Natsuo was very happy to discover that. Although the children born in this batch were relatively average, and none of them had exceptional talents with an evaluation over 100 making Yazuki Yugao's child still the most talented among the current Ichiha babies. But overall, the physical condition of this batch of babies seemed much better, and their potential was much improved compared to before. This was not simply because the conditions of the women giving birth were better, and their talents were superior. For, in addition to the newly accepted wives, the talents of the sons born of several wives who had been previously accepted, had also improved in comparison with those of the sons they had previously born. So, this was not the influence of the wives this was brought about by Natsuo. In the ninja world, bloodline inheritance is a source of power. The quality of children largely depends on the abilities of both parents. For example, the Yuzumaki clan naturally has more chakra than others, and the Uchiha clan naturally has stronger mental power than others. While the level of the wives remained relatively stable, the potential of the children increased. Because I am stronger than before, Natsuo thought to himself. Compared to the ordinary Chunin he was when he first impregnated Yukino, Natsuo's strength was now ten times stronger. Not only does he have more chakra and stronger mental power, but he has also had a rapid increase in physical strength. With the improvement in the conditions on the father's side, the potential of the children naturally increased. However, Natsuo's growth in strength was only achieved in his body, and aside from having the knowledge instilled in his mind of the various jutsus received and system rewards, his combat experience is only found at his original tune and level. After all, most of his time was devoted to the revival of the Achiha clan, and he could not spend much energy on rigorous training and gaining combat experience. He used the time, which ordinary ninjas spent fighting, to revive the Achiha clan. Therefore, Natsuo's strength would constantly increase at a rapid rate, according to the speed at which his children are born, but he could not experience sudden jumps in his combat power through his own learning and other means such as Naruto and Sasuke in the original work. Therefore, if he really wanted to further enhance the potential of his unborn children, he had to start with his wives. Without hesitation, Natsuo increased his courses on medical ninjutsu. In the ninja world, bloodline inheritance is powerful, and if he wanted to strengthen his wives, allowing the children to naturally inherit more talents, he had to approach it from the perspective of biology and genetic engineering. Medical ninjutsu was the most extensive and suitable way for this kind of knowledge. It just so happens that I have Hashirama's cells and Jugo's cells in my hands. It would be a waste not to use them. A gleam of light flickered in Natsuo's eyes. In order to learn quickly, maybe I should also show some real skills the next day. Natsuo was following a female shinobi dressed in white to learn medical ninjutsu. The female shinobi was in her 40s, with a gentle face, soft voice, and benevolent eyes. She was the director of Kanoha Hospital, whom Natsuo had hired at a high price. She was demonstrating the advanced medical technique chakra scalpel. This medical technique formed one's chakra into a small, sharp blade. This can then be used for highly accurate incisions necessary for surgeries and anatomical dissections. The chakra scalp
scalpel can also be used offensively to inflict internal damage, although it requires great precision to be effective. In the original plot only, Kabuto was able to demonstrate enough skill with the technique to be able to perform fatal slashes that can target vital points, even cutting through wooden flesh with ease. He could also sever the chakra pathway system, which prevented a Jinchuriki from receiving chakra from their tailed beast. If some shinobi medical trainees who aspire to become medical experts saw this scene, they would definitely eagerly memorize the knowledge and fix their eyes on the Kunochi, leaving no room for others. However, in this place, apart from Natsuo, who was staring intently at the Kunoichi, the wives around him were all looking at Natsuo with shock. Of course, they weren't staring at Natsuo because of the affection they had for him. They were looking at Natsuo's eyes. Three Tomo was slowly rotating in his eyes. It's the Three Tomo Sharingan. Our husband actually has Three Tomo Sharingan. I heard that when a member of the Achiha clan awakens the Three Tomo Sharingan, his strength would increase to the Jonin level. Not all the Jonin of the Achiha clan had the Three Tomo Sharingan, but if all the Achihas who had Three Tomo Sharingan were of Jonin level. Oh! But wasn't a husband already a Jonin? You're silly, girl. How a husband got the title of Jonin, others may not know. But don't you know? Natsuo's wives were still arguing about the strength he possessed. But their eyes showed that they were filled with joy for Natsuo. That was the three Tomo Sharingan, a skill that only the Jonin of the Ichiha clan possessed. Now, who would dare say that Natsuo was only a Jonin in name? But in reality, he was still a Chunin. Which Chunin can activate three Tomo Sharingan? Oh. But what they didn't know is that in Naruto world, there are more scandalous cases, such as the one in which the Genin of Kanoha could save the world, or easily defeat the Tsutsuki clan. After the director of the hospital demonstrated it once, she extended her hand in invitation and said, Come on, Natsuo, you give it a try, okay? Natsuo nodded and reached out his hand. His expression was serious as he stared at his palm. Slowly, a blue light appeared in his hand. At first, there were some fluctuations, but eventually it stabilized. He really learned it. Although she had already guessed this scene, the director of the hospital couldn't help but exclaim, So this is the power of the Achiha clan, it's truly amazing. Yes. The blue light in Natsuo's hand slowly dissipated, and he smiled as a member of the Achiha clan. I still have some advantages in this aspect. Yes, he is using the Sharingan to learn ninjutsu. One of the best known abilities of the Sharingan is the power to understand, capture or copy any type of ninjutsu, jinjutsu and tojutsu, and use these techniques as if they were your own, and even modify them to obtain a better technique based on the main imitated jutsu. Just like Azuzi in the original plot, he created his lion combo from Rock Lee's front lotus. But despite this ability, the Sharingan is not capable of copying techniques that require a Keke Jenkai, secret jutsus or summoning jutsus, that require having a contract signed in blood. Kakashi, relying on the Sharingan, along with his solid foundation and extraordinary talent, is known as the Copy Ninja, because he can literally copy any ninjutsu that is used in front of him. Although Natsuo's talent cannot be compared with Kakashi's talent, after someone demonstrates and explains the key points of ninjutsu in front of him several times, he can also quickly understand ninjutsu through the Sharingan. In fact, this is also the standard way for the Achiha clan's experts to learn ninjutsu. The Achiha clan regards the Sharingan highly, not only because it can provide assistance in battle, but also because it brings this formidable learning ability. Therefore, every Achiha who awakens the Sharingan is an elite who has mastered a large number of ninjutsu. Natsuo did not reveal his Manjekyo Sharingan, but the three Tomo Sharingan exposed also made everyone very happy. Of course, this also somewhat justifies his level as a Jonin in name. So now he can say, I'm actually not weak, I'm a true Jonin. So if you like me ladies, don't be more secretive, the doors of the Echiha clan are open. His wives were overjoyed. Yuzuki Yuga smiled and Anko laughed considering asking Natsuo to teach her ninjutsu. Yuhi Kurenai also smiled, thinking that her husband should not be weaker than her. Yukino even suggested having a celebration, and all the women gathered around agreeing to the idea. And as one of the only two remaining members of the Echiha clan, Sasuke was also extremely happy. However, compared to the joy of Natsuo's wives, Sasuke was more curious about Natsuo's methods of awakening the Sharingan. Big Brother Natsuo, how did you awaken the three Tomo Sharingan? Sasuke asked curiously, and with eyes full of anticipation he asked again. You can teach me. He remembered that Natsuo used to have only the one Tomo Sharingan. In the last period of time, Natsuo was only in the Achiha clan working to revive the Achiha clan. So how did his Sharingan become three Tomo? Big brother Natsuo, please teach me. Sasuke pleaded with a face full of sincerity. I don't ask to awaken the three Tomo Sharingan, but it would be nice if you could help me awaken the Sharingan. Natsuo glanced at Sasuke. This guy actually awakened his eyes during the night of the Achiha clan genocide, but he himself didn't know it, and his body had not fully recovered, so during this time Sasuke thought that his Sharingan had not awakened yet. But teaching Sasuke, not considering that the bandaged one-eyed man, known as Shinobi Darkness, would do something if it was discovered that Sasuke's talent was not inferior to Itachi's. But even the third Hokage, even with the threat of Itachi, 
would be moved. After all, there are too many loopholes in the Achiha clan's genocide. They can tolerate a Jonan Achiha who is only dedicated to having children. But if I start teaching Sasuke, they might be threatened by his talent, and might even consider that in the future, he would awaken the Manjekyo Sharingan like Itachi and Shisui. So why earn so much trouble when I can become strong without taking so many risks? Just because Sasuke is the protagonist, should I have to take care of him as if I were his babysitter? But I can't be so ruthless as to just throw him out alright, I'll help you. Natsuo's mouth cold up. Sasuke, I think you also know that our Uchiha clan's Sharingan needs a great stimulus to awaken. For this, you may experience some things you don't want to experience, is that okay? I'm willing. Sasuke said firmly. Natsuo nodded. Half an hour later. Sasuke, with a bewildered expression, was carried away by Natsuo, his eyes filled with confusion. He couldn't help but ask Big Brother Natsuo, Did you bring me here just to stimulate me? Yeah. Natsuo said as if it was only natural, but big brother Natsuo, Sasuke couldn't help but say, this is a club. Yes, Natsuo brought Sasuke to the club. It's not that he wants to make fun of Izuzi. Anyway, Ichiha Sero in the Baruto series, showed that the Sharingan can also be awakened with emotions like longing or love. So who knows, this could be a crucial step in understanding the Sharingan better. Yes, this is why he brought Sasuke to the club. After such a long time, Ichiha Entertainment Street's reputation has been completely established. Not only the locals of Kanoho Village, but also many people from the capital of the Fire Country have heard of its fame and come here out of curiosity. What attracts people here is no longer just women who want to marry into a wealthy family. More and more men who are attracted by these women are starting to occupy a place here. Naturally, some places specifically for men's services have also emerged. The place Natsuo brought Sasuke to is exactly such a club that specializes in serving men. Sasuke looked confused coming here to awaken the Sharingan. Did I miss here? You wanted to have strong emotions, didn't you? Natsuo looked at Sasuke. If you want to feel strong emotions, shut up and follow me. Is the excitement you're talking about the same as the excitement I want? Sasuke opened his mouth, almost blurting it out. Hurry up and come in and be careful not to accidentally undo the transformation technique. Natsuo looked at Sasuke to keep up with him, and then walked inside. Of course, he wouldn't enter the club in his true form. Although Natsuo often uses his fame to promote Ichiha clan's bars and dance halls to attract women, the club in front of him clearly specializes in men's business. If Natsuo were to enter such a club, it would only tarnish his reputation and discourage the millions of women who want to marry into the Ichiha clan. Moreover, this club is not even owned by the Ichiha clan. It is a business that was attracted by the Ichiha clan's investment. In theory, apart from some rent, it has no connection with the Ichiha clan. Of course, if investigated thoroughly, it might be found that the Ichiha family owns a large portion of the club's shares. Sasuke opened his mouth to want to say something, but finally followed Natsuo inside. Both of them transformed into young men in their twenties. Seeing them enter together seemed a little like two brothers going to look for escorts. Entering the club, even Sasuke couldn't help but look around. It's a man's instinct. Although Sasuke is mostly indifferent to women and is still young. But as he looked at the luxurious decoration, the escorts in black stockings coming and going, and the faintly heard disharmonious sounds, a surge of agitation arose in his heart. Sasuke, at such a young age, didn't understand the origin of this agitation, but he felt a hint of restlessness in his mouth. On the other hand, Natsuo also contacted the manager. With a bunch of doting wives at home, he naturally wouldn't come to a place like this. But as a major shareholder, he naturally has the right to mobilize manpower. So, Natsuo quickly led Sasuke to a large room. Then Natsuo took out a bunch of ropes. Come on, Sasuke, stand against this pillar. Natsuo held the ropes and started to wrap them around Sasuke. Sasuke was completely bewildered. Wait. Natsuo, it wasn't until he was halfway tied up that he suddenly woke up and couldn't help but say, what are you doing? I'm not interested in playing this kind of game. After all, he is a ninja, especially since his only relative is in a harem every day. Although Sasuke is young, he still knows a thing or two about certain things. He also knows about this game, and he has even heard that Natsuo has played it. Several female ninjas under Orochimaru's command were very interested in this aspect. But Natsuo was responsible for tying people up in those games. So why is he the one being tied up now? Natsuo, what are you thinking? Sasuke couldn't help but shout loudly and began to struggle. Don't tell me you're using this game to help me awaken the Achiha clan's Sharingan. This kind of Sharingan is not the pride of the Achiha, but the shame of the Achiha. Wait, what are you thinking? Natsuo replied impatiently with a disdainful look. You're so young, yet you have so many thoughts don't worry. It has nothing to do with what you're thinking. If I really wanted to use those methods to help you awaken the Sharingan, wouldn't Itachi go crazy and come to kill us? Natsuo thought. Just stay still and trust me. I promise I won't harm you. Don't you want to awaken the Sharingan? Just be honest. After scolding Sasuke a couple of times, Natsuo finally managed to calm him down. He securely tied up Sasuke using professional ninja techniques to ensure that even if Sasuke struggled, he wouldn't be able to break free. Sasuke could only suppress his uneasiness and ask, 
What are you going to do? What am I going to do? Just watch. Natsuo turned and walked towards the club manager. Let's begin. The manager nodded and quickly brought a group of escorts. Then a large group of attractive women entered, with various body types, wearing black stockings and giving off a seductive atmosphere. Even young Sasuke couldn't help but swallow his saliva subconsciously. There was no way around it. It was a natural reaction for a man, even for a boy. And in the next second, the attractive women surged forward. Oh, is it us that the young master has chosen? He, this method is quite interesting. Young master, is it uncomfortable being tied up? Let the sisters help you relax, okay? Oh my, you're so naughty the escorts playfully bantered but their delicate hands gently caress Sasuke's skin. They leaned closer to Sasuke, pressing their soft bodies against him. Sasuke was completely panicked. Wait, Natsuo, what is this? Before he could finish speaking, his mouth was covered. He tried to signal with his eyes, but something quickly covered his eyes. Now the question is, what covered Sasuke's eyes and blocked his mouth? The escort smiled brightly. Young maestro, you're so cute, your face is even turning red. Sasuke, woo 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 humiliation, anger, desire. All mixed together, forming a unique emotion that erupted in Sasuke's heart. He desired something, but he was tied to a pillow and couldn't obtain what he wanted. Natsuo stood not far away, smiling without saying a word. The strongest human emotion is fear, and the most enduring emotion is desire. Until now it was only believed that the awakening of the Sharingan must always be accompanied by negative emotions. I, Ichiha Natsuo, will definitely lead the Ichiha clan down a path that not even Ichiha Madara could have imagined. Continuously stimulating people's instinctive desires but being firmly bound, unable to obtain, and finally erupting. Of course, the provocative words of the young ladies were also a factor in Sasuke's awakening. Natsuo specifically instructed the escorts to occasionally mention phrases like getting hard or having a reaction, when referring to Sasuke, constantly stimulating his self-esteem. And after this series of stimulation, Sasuke's spiritual power finally skyrocketed, breaking through the original restraints. He awakened his eyes. To be more precise, he stabilized the already awakened Sharingan. But Sasuke himself didn't feel good. So, this is your method of awakening. Sasuke's face was filled with embarrassment and anger. Just as he was let down by Natsuo, he grabbed Natsuo's collar. Of course not. Natsuo didn't hesitate to say, this method is not suitable for me. After all, do you think I would feel ashamed about this kind of thing? Natsuo was not like Sasuke, an innocent little boy. Having experienced countless battles, he was not someone that this group of escorts could stimulate. Not to mention the shame. I've already opened up a harem, and you're still talking to me about shame. Then why did you use this method on me? Sasuke was furious. Can't you use your own method to awaken me? It won't work for you. Natsuo spread his hands and said. Sasuke became even angrier. How do you know it won't work for me? Oh, because when I awakened my eyes, I borrowed Enko's power. She asked me for a whole night, but halfway through I ran out of power, and then she had an expression of that's it. Can't you anymore continue? Then in a fit of rage my Sharingan evolved. Natsuo helplessly said, if you want to use my method, first you have to find more women. Sasuke. Of course, the actual situation was not as Natsuo described, but at least it could serve as an excuse. After all, isn't it normal for a man's dignity to be hurt and awaken his eyes? Sasuke opened his mouth, but he couldn't refute this reason because it was a solution he couldn't imitate. Don't make that expression. Natsuo smiled and said, feel good, you really awakened your Sharingan. A nine-year-old boy with the Sharingan awakened, you really are a genius. If I knew it was done using this method, I would rather not awaken these eyes. Sasuke said angrily. He felt that his self-esteem had been injured. I asked you before I took action. Natsuo spread his hands, indicating that he shouldn't be blamed, and cough. Sasuke, don't you need to clean up in the bathroom? Clean up? Yeah. Don't you feel your pants are a bit wet? You, he glared at Natsuo with anger, and then as if he was fleeing for his life, he ran away in a hurry. Natsuo shook his head gently. Young people today have very thin skin. Many men want to experience this kind of pleasure, but I never invited them he laughed lightly, then turned and left. The awakening of Sasuke's Sharingan may have started as a joke, but it was also a test. If he wants to regain the honor of the Achiha clan, he has to have a very strong mentality. I have sacrificed too much for the Achiha clan. In the following days, Natsuo continued to study medical techniques. After hard work, he finally managed to revitalize the Hashirama cells and Jugo cells, and make them replicate themselves. For this, he also spent a lot of money to purchase a batch of research equipment. He also had some ideas he wanted to try, but to carry out tests for his ideas, he would need more expensive scientific research equipment. The Achiha clan was not lacking in money. But this kind of equipment had very low demand, and manufacturers only started production when they received an order for one. Even if you have money, it's difficult to buy it quickly. I still have to wait for the machines to arrive so, during this time, let's focus on reviving the Ajiha clan. Most importantly, Natsuo also got an unexpected surprise from Yuzumaki Yoko. The evening is gone, the darkness makes little sound, except for the two of us. As I look down at her, the sweat falls, her face catching each drop, 
her tongue tasting those in reach. Her hand on mine, her intentions clear. My heart pounds heavily in my chest trying to catch my breath. She is waiting for our next connection with a burning fever. I can see her eyes in the darkness. That fiery glow lets me know. I must call upon more strength. Now our hands are locked tightly. Yuzumaki Yoko suddenly blushed and her voice broke the silence. Lord Natsuo, do you know that our Yuzumaki clan has a special secret technique called physical healing? It is a very powerful technique. You mean how Kusagaka was recovering during the war with your help, right? I know. Natsuo was taken aback and said, but what does that have to do with me? Physical healing can quickly restore chakra and injuries. Self or others, by biting into the user's skin, and absorbing their chakra. But he wasn't injured, and his chakra was abundant. Why would he need that? No, what I mean is Yoko bit Natsuo's ear. Her voice filled with shyness. This ability can actually also restore a person's physical strength, vitality. Yes, it includes that aspect. As long as you bite me, you can recover Natsuo. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, what the hell? Physical healing has this kind of effect. I have to experience it for myself. Then Natsuo said, then we can try before he finished speaking, she said yes. Emboldened, I got a little excited, laughed and asked for something even more loving. The lustful wench nodded without blinking. In recent days, Natsuo's experience with the effect of Yuzumaki Yoko's physical healing, has shown that this healing ability is really good, only surpassed by his own manjakyo technique, Aim no Yuzum. Although physical healing itself does not need to be supplemented with spiritual energy, as it is only a byproduct of healing, but it does need to consume a little more chakra. Of course, Natsuo mainly uses the manjakyo technique Aim no Yuzum, which is the name of the technique he obtained by awakening the Manjakyo Sharingan. But so far, Natsuo has not felt any deterioration in his vision, and the consumption of pupil power is even less than if he performed ordinary Jinjutsu. This power is what gives Natsuo the confidence to be able to keep a group of wives happy. Yuzumaki Yoko's physical healing is just its supplement, and alternating use between both techniques, it is the perfect complement that the Ichiha clan needs to revival. Combining the two techniques, Natsuo feels that he can fight continuously for several days and nights without rest. Thinking about it, I should expand the scale of recruitment. So, Natsuo once again began to select wives for the revival of the Ichiha clan. With a wave of his hand, he recruited many female ninjas who signed up for the task. He even almost caused the male ninjas of Kanoha to go berserk. If you take all the beautiful women worth courting, leaving none to others, what should we do? As a result, under the subconscious resistance of the men, some negative public opinion began to spread in Kanoha. The Kinochi who marry into the Ichiha clan are all for money. They are all gold diggers. For the sake of marrying into a wealthy family, you give up so much. You are lowly. It's better to cry in the Ichiha mansion than to laugh in a rented house. Why have women become so lowly? Every one of Natsuo's wives is lowly. They may not necessarily think this way sincerely, but they all subconsciously spread such words. Although this kind of talk definitely wouldn't be said in front of Natsuo. However, the quietly circulating rumors gradually spread to the Ichiha clan. Several of Natsuo's wives heard those rumors, and their eyes turned red. To be honest, among Natsuo's wives, there are indeed a bunch of gold diggers, who initially pursued becoming rich wives. But Natsuo is handsome, speaks well, is generous, caring, and even impeccable in bed. Over time, he naturally completely captured the hearts of many of his wives. Otherwise, those spies would not have stayed in the Ichiha clan for just over two years. And except for Aoko who was brainwashed by Orochimaru, no one else betrayed him. So, when Natsuo heard the rumors in Kanoha, he simply regarded those people as talking nonsense. However, the wives couldn't take it anymore. They felt that their self-esteem had been shattered. Some of the wives, with the proudest personalities, even petitioned Natsuo for a divorce. Since they did not want to tarnish the reputation of the Ichiha clan. And at this moment, Natsuo stood up to speak for his wives. Although he wanted to go and beat up all those annoying people. But considering that he was an Ichiha who was only interested in having children to revive the clan, he still couldn't demonstrate his combat power. Then he publicly stated, I love each and every one of my wives, and I believe that my wives also deeply love me. Perhaps the initial reason we came together was not so pure, but to be able to come this far, our feelings are beyond doubt. Then he seriously reasoned, stating that with the value of his own wives, even if they were to divorce now, they could still live a worry-free life. Since they no longer lack money, Yet they willingly stay by my side. Isn't it just love that remains? But there were still people who questioned, since it's all love, why do you still have to give them money? You are tarnishing love with money. If you give money, then it's impure love. However, Natsuo told a true, made-up, story recorded in the history of the Ichiha clan. It is said that Ichiha Madara's father, Ichiha Tajima, issued a special order during the Sengoku period, as many Sharingan of the Ichiha clan were lost, and he wanted to recover them. It was stipulated that Ichiha clan members who recovered Sharingan that had fallen into the hands of outsiders, 
could receive a large sum of money as a reward from the clan. Once, Echeha Madara defeated an enemy in battle and captured a pair of Sharingan. Out of his love for the clan, he handed over the Sharingan to the clan, but refused to accept the reward, hoping that the reward could be used to strengthen other aspects of the Echeha clan, rather than on him, who already had considerable strength. However, Echeha Madara's father, Echeha Tajima, earnestly said, Madara, what you're doing is wrong. Accepting the rewards from the clan won't affect your love for the Achiha, but by refusing to accept them, thinking that you're morally superior and honorable, you're actually using morality to pressure others not to accept rewards. How many clan members in the future will be willing to fight to recover the Sharingan that has fallen into the hands of the enemy? After a few days, Achiha Madara's younger brother, Achiha Izuna, saved their Achiha clan member from the enemy, at the cost of being injured in battle. Grateful, the clan member gave Izuna their strongest secret technique as a token of gratitude. As the second son of the Echeha clan leader, Echeha Izuna didn't actually need a regular clan member's secret technique, but he still accepted it. Upon hearing this, Echeha Tajima happily said, Izuna did a great job. Now our Echeha clan will definitely be willing to help our clan members. Sure enough, the Echeha clan became more united and stronger. Echeha Madara was greatly shocked by this. From then on, he started motivating the clan members with both interests and morality leading the Achiha to unity, bravery, and hard work, quickly making the Achiha reach their peak. After the first Hokage created Kanoha, Achiha Madara, based on his father's guidance and his own personal experiences, believed that pursuing peace solely through personal morality and mutual understanding was a mistake. According to Senjo Hashirama's method, the shinobi world would never achieve peace. Therefore, he advocated joining forces with Senja Hashirama to eliminate the other nations and create a world dominated by Kanoha, bound by interests and truly capable of achieving peace. Unfortunately, Senja Hashirama rejected him, leaving the other nations as they were, forcing future generations to continue shedding blood. This story quickly spread throughout Kanoha, and everyone was amazed to hear it. Although Ichiha Madara was an enemy who betrayed Kanoha, his past reputation was still deeply ingrained in the hearts of the older generation of Shinobis. Through oral storytelling, it reached the ears of the new generation of Shinobis. After hearing this story, Sasuke also approved of the ideology of this Echeha ancestor, and couldn't help but search for clan records to find a more complete story. People who had personally seen Echeha Madara, such as the third Hokage and Danzo, couldn't help but recall his personality, and imagine the scene of Echeha Madara being educated by his father, causing them to burst into laughter. Others were caught in deep thought was Echeha Madara's way of doing things right or wrong. If Senju Hashirama and Echeha Madara joined forces to eliminate the other shinobi villages, would we no longer have to go through these wars in the shinobi world? So many people have died in these wars. Many of Natsuo's wives also stood up for this Echeha story. Yes, we didn't care before, but now we've completely fallen in love with Natsuo. We didn't want to accept Natsuo was money. But for the revival of the Achiha, we have no choice but to accept it. We don't love money. We do it for the revival of the Achiha. If Natsuo needs it, we can give him all our money right now to contribute to the Achiha clan. And many women actually gave all their money to Natsuo, making him have to return it one by one. After a series of actions, the public opinion finally calmed down. Some of the younger generation of hawkish shinobi strongly agreed with this guiding people with interest story, and believed that Kanova should conquer the world in order to truly bring peace to the shinobi world. They even developed a strong curiosity about the unseen Achiha Madara. As a result, even the way they looked at the Achiha clan became more favorable. Finally, it's over, Natsuo sighed in relief. He had put in a lot of effort to calm the storm by relying on public opinion. To think that they wanted to rely on public opinion to prevent Kinoichi from marrying into the Achiha clan, and thus affect the resurgence of the Achiha. Danzo, you old harpy, how have you already recovered from the explosion? You can't be calm without being hit again. Well, although Natsuo had no evidence, he felt that this sudden public opinion storm was Danzo's doing. Whenever any incident happens to the Achiha, her clan in Kanoha, Shimura Danzo at least has to be responsible for half of it. After all, besides him, who else would target the Ichiha clan? Danzo, I'm innocent. I didn't do it this time. It was you who influenced the men of Kanoha and caused their spontaneous behavior. It has nothing to do with me. Regardless of the truth, Natsuo decided to retaliate against Danzo. He changed into black clothes and put on a mask. And he headed towards the Root base. Root is a secret organization that many Kanoha ninja have never heard of even after having existed for years. Therefore, the base of Root is naturally very secretive. But in the end Natsuo was still able to find it. After all, this is an organization that many clan ninjas have joined. Even if Danzo is strict, it is impossible to completely seal off the information about the base of Root. As the head of the Achiha clan and a Jonin, Natsuo 
Although he didn't pay special attention, he also knew the locations of several root bases. If the previous aerial bombardment didn't hurt you, then let's try attacking directly. Natsuo put on dark clothes and used a mask to cover his face, then walked directly towards one of Root's bases. He had only taken a few steps near one of the possible bases, and in an instant, several shurikens shot towards him, while several figures quickly ran towards his direction. It's really Root. Their style of attacking without hesitation is much stronger than those trash ninjas from Kusagika. However, Natsuo only slightly adjusted his position as he advanced, and all those shurikens seemed to deliberately avoid him, all missing their target. The Root ninjas remained silent, like robots, filled with a sense of death. But they didn't hesitate to attack. Three ninjas rushed towards him, wielding ninja swords, slashing towards Natsuo. The force was so great that if they successfully struck Natsuo, they might not have time to stop their momentum and end up hitting their comrade. However, no one hesitated for a moment. Natsuo remained calm and walked straight ahead as if he hadn't seen the enemies rushing towards him. But just as they were about to attack, the three ninjas suddenly trembled. Their eyes turned white, and they instantly fell down. Jinjutsu Sharingan. For these Chunin level ninjas, the Jinjutsu of the Sharingan is completely unbeatable. The other root ninjas frowned, their expressions changing slightly. Sharingan. There are only two known Sharingan users in the world. One is the defected Ichiha Itachi, and the other is the current Ichiha clan head Ichiha Natsuo. Which one is it? The root ninjas speculated in their hearts. And without hesitation, they exchanged a glance with their companions. The companion received the order and went. But before he could take a few steps, Natsuo appeared beside him. Sorry, since I've used the Sharingan, I have no intention of letting you leave alive. Natsuo smiled lightly and casually ended the enemy's life. After all, he is a formidable cage-level powerhouse. How could he let a few ninjas escape from his hands? This is what gives him the confidence to use the Sharingan on the root ninjas. You won't let us transmit the information. But it doesn't matter. This is Kanoha. Reinforcements will arrive soon. The captain of the root ninjas snorted coldly. Keep him entangled. Don't let him escape. With the command, root ninjas continuously emerged from the underground base, launching attacks fearlessly towards Natsuo. Natsuo sneered, forming hand seals with both hands. Fire release. Great fire annihilation. The raging flames spew forth from his mouth, forming a towering sea of fire, with scorching waves surging forth. The inferno sweeps through, turning the newly emerged root ninjas into fireballs. They can no longer maintain their composure, wailing and rolling on the ground, but unable to lower the temperature even a bit. This is just a small root base. How can it withstand the attack of a cage-level expert? Damn it. Who are you? Why are you attacking us? The captain cries out in pain. His mask has been shattered by the flames, revealing a pained and somewhat numb expression underneath. Natsuo is taken aback. It's actually someone he knows. Tanuki Shigaraki, the biological father of Sumaya Kake in the Baruto series, is a researcher in the Root organization, a loyal follower of Shimura Danzo. Following the original plot, a few years later, when Danzo was killed and Root was disbanded, Tanuki would be forced to abandon his job. This, along with the idea that Kanoha had betrayed Danzo, would cause Tanuki to begin to hate the village and continue his work in the hope of avenging Danzo and Root. He finally completed his work creating new. He would eventually die, but not before training his daughter Sumaya Shigaraki into a capable ninja, as well as transferring the Gozu Tenno to her. So, this is a research base of Root. This root base was randomly chosen by Natsuo. After all, Danzo's ability to block information is quite impressive. Although the address of the root base is not a secret, few people know what exactly is being done inside. Natsuo blinked and sent Tanuki Shigaraki off with a casual gesture. Then he stepped into the base. There are very few ninjas inside, probably all of them have come out to fight Natsuo. The remaining few were easily dealt with by Natsuo. But looking around, it seems to be just an ordinary underground base, with a few training facilities. It should be a training ground for cultivating new blood for Root. There is no trace that this place is a scientific research center for Root. This shouldn't be like this. Tanuki Shigaraki is an outstanding researcher. He can even create the ultimate weapon Gozu Tenno, made from Hashirama's cells. A person like that wouldn't become the leader of a recruit training camp without any reason. Wait, Hashirama's cells. Natsuo's pupils contracted. His expression became solemn as he carefully sensed his surroundings. Searching inch by inch, he quickly discovered a wall that seemed out of place. With a fist punch, the wall was forcefully shattered, revealing a high-end research laboratory filled with advanced equipment inside. It was hidden here looks like I accidentally discovered Danzo's secret research facility. This high-end experimental equipment are even things that Natsuo could not buy, since to make them, the manufacturer would need to stop production of other equipment to build them. With these things, I can finally start my own laboratory. Natsuo smiled. Then, without hesitation, he took out a storage scroll and began to load the goods. 
In reality, the valuable items in this research facility are not just a few machines, but also the experimental materials that Danzo painstakingly collected. Senju Hashirama's cells, Yuzumaki Kishina's blood, Namika's Minato's bone marrow, each one has a specialized machine for preservation to ensure their viability. There are even two unexpected treasures. That is the eyes of Uchiha Fugaku and Uchiha Makoto. These things are actually here with Danzo. Natsuo is shocked. Isn't he afraid of being killed by Itachi? They are the eyes of Uchiha Makoto and Uchiha Fugaku. It's one thing to take the eyes of other Uchihas, but to take the eyes of the corpses of his parents, isn't Danzo afraid that Uchiha Itachi will come knocking on his door with a Seuss new in a fit of rage? Natsuo was shocked by Danzo's audacity, but upon further thought, this guy has done this kind of thing before. Tsunade is still alive, and how much did she research from her grandfather Senju Hashirama's cells? Itachi probably wouldn't leave his parents' bodies unattended, but as a rogue ninja, even if it's just to show his attitude, he would most likely bury his parents in Kanoha. I remember when I signed the cremation agreement, Fugaku's eyes were there, so they must have been switched early on. In fact, not only the eyes of Fugaku and Makoto, but also the eyes of other Uchihas were also left with their bodies at that moment. After all, it was Atachi who openly murdered everyone, and at that moment he attracted everyone's attention. Of course, Natsuo can be sure that Danzo had long ago quietly switched many Uchiha's eyes, and he might even say that he switched them all. He just didn't expect that he would dare to switch Fugaku's eyes. But now it's a bargain for me. Uchiha Fugaku is definitely owns the Manjekyo Sharingan. There is also a possibility that Uchiha Makoto owns the Manjekyo Sharingan. Danzo certainly couldn't know this but he preserved the eyes of both of them very well, using expensive instruments and preservatives to ensure the vitality of the eye cells. He probably wanted to get information about the Manjekyo Sharingan from the eyes of these two people connected by blood to Itachi, since Itachi had activated the Manjekyo Sharingan. Or maybe he was planning to make a deal with Itachi and Sasuke, by using his parents' eyes when necessary. In any case, he was unable to discover the Manjekyo Sharingan, otherwise he would have transplanted them into himself like he did with Shisui's eyes. But Danzo not knowing is a good thing for me. In theory, if Natsuo directly replaces his eyes with Fugaku's, he will instantly become an eternal Manjekyo Sharingan. Put them away, put them away. Natsuo acted without hesitation. And it has to be quick, with so many good things, Danzo would go crazy if he found out this place was attacked. Reinforcements will arrive soon. Even Danzo himself might come personally. He sped up his actions even abandoning without hesitation materials, such as cellular tissue samples from Inuzuka Akira and spinal fluid from Yamanaka Kurenai who were elite jonin level shinobi. After quickly collecting the spoils of war, Natsuo thought for a moment, since I was already here, it seemed like I should leave some harsh words, after all no one will know it was me. So, he engraved a few words on the wall. Danzo, you old dog, this is just the beginning. Dare to mess with me, don't think I'll let you off. He then launched the Jutsu Great Fireball technique towards the sky before quickly leaving. Not long after Natsuo left, many Shinobis arrived. Not only were there Root Shinobis, but also Kanoha Shinobis from the surrounding area. Natsuo's actions were too big, and the final Jutsu of the Great Fireball technique was like a sign naturally attracting many shinobi. They acted quickly, the movements were decisive, and there was not a single survivor. Where are the enemies? Have they already left? This is the main base of the route, right? How dare someone attack the main base of the route? Everyone looked shocked. Now these inexplicable enemies are becoming bolder and bolder. First, they threw explosive tags to attack Elder Danzo, and now they can cause a commotion in the root's base, and leave calmly. The security of Kanova is far inferior to the time when Uchiha was in charge. It has deteriorated significantly. At this moment, Dan Danzo finally arrived. Damn it. Who on earth would dare to attack my route? Danzo's face showed intense anger upon seeing the heavily damaged base. Although he was furious, he couldn't afford to be distracted. He quickly rushed towards the hidden research lab. Although there were backups of research materials like Senja Hashirama's cells and other labs, there were more exclusive materials like Fugaki's Sharingan. However, shortly after entering the base, everything turned black before his eyes. The research lab had been discovered. They took away many scientific machines and countless precious materials, leaving behind only unusable things lying like garbage on the ground. In addition, there was a blatant mocking message engraved nearby. Damn it. Who is it? I will skin you alive. Danzo roared in anger. He felt a surge of rage welling up from his chest, wishing to burn the whole world to ashes. However, at this moment Elder Danzo, don't you think you should explain what's going on here first? A voice filled with boundless anger rang out. It was a man accompanied by several large dogs. His nose was rough, his eyes filled with killing intent, and his palms faintly revealed sharp nails. Why would the flesh and blood of my older brother Inyazuka Akira appear in your root base? Shouldn't you give an explanation to the Inyazuka clan for this? Only then did Danzo suddenly wake up. 
This is bad. Many of the ninjas here are from major clans. Trouble is brewing. At this time, others also noticed the experimental materials scattered on the ground, especially the words written on the labels they were carrying. Other Danzo, a Yamanaka clan member, Kurunai, died on the battlefield of a Wagika. Why would her spinal fluid appear in your base? Danzo, my younger brother sacrificed himself on a mission three years ago. How could his body end up here? I remember that Seijin was a root ninja, and died in a covert mission I want to ask you. Did Seijin really die in battle? Countless clan ninjas' eyes turned red, and endless anger burned in their chests. Finally, it condensed into a chilling statement. Elder Danzo, don't you have anything to say? Countless killing intent surged towards Danzo, even though he had experienced three great ninja wars, and had countless killings under his belt, he still felt a sense of oppression. The members of the Shinobi clan were truly angry. These precious materials that were not taken away by Natsuo were all their brothers and sisters. They were willing to die for Kanoha and were not afraid. But to be used as research subjects after death, who would be willing? Danzo tried hard to find an excuse. But he couldn't think of anything that could explain this situation. But he was not willing to be captured without a fight. In the end, the situation became so chaotic that the third Hokage had to come and clean up the mess. And so, the next day, as a Jonin, Natsuo heard the news that Shimura Danzo had once again been stripped of his position as leader of the route and his role as advisor by the third Hokage, and was sentenced to three years in house arrest. The charges were of incompetence and duty. It seems like the third Hokage has saved Danzo again. Natsuo thought to himself, Although Danzo had been relieved of his duties, the reason for his removal was incompetence. Yes, it had nothing to do with those precious materials from various major ninja clans. Natsuo later learned from some clan leaders that in front of countless members of the ninja clans, the third Hokage declared that all those labels were fake and were a means to frame Elder Danzo by the spies who had infiltrated the root base. Don't believe it. Go to the Kanoha hospital for testing. The flesh and blood samples are definitely not from your clan members. Many members of the ninja clans were furious and almost started a fight with the third Hokage. Faking a test report isn't that simple. We are all ninjas, are you kidding me? Seeing the situation was not going well, the third Hokage immediately stated that Shimura Danzo's management of the route was unfavorable, and he would be severely punished stripped of his position as the leader of the route and subjected to a series of punishments. Only then did the crowd slightly calm down, but everyone also understood that this was just a means to appease the ninja clans. When the Achiha clan was annihilated, wasn't Danzo already stripped of his position as the leader of the route? But what is he doing now? Isn't he still the leader of the route? It's just a title. After a while, when everyone's anger subsides and public opinion calms down, the third Hokage will bring Danzo back. So, as many members of the ninja clans left, they took away the materials with the names of their clan members written on them, without saying a word. Even though Danzo repeatedly said that these are all ninja materials from enemy villages, they still burned all the remaining materials left in the laboratory, without giving the third Hokage any face. The third Hokage turned a blind eye to this, and didn't dare to say much. The divide between Kanoha and the major ninja clans is too great. The third Hokage is completely biased towards Danzo and represses the ninja clans. Both sides have long been at odds. If the third Hokage continues to maintain power, Kanoha will likely fall into chaos. Natsuo thought to himself, apostrophe in the original work, fortunately a few years in the future, Orochimaru would attack Kanoha during the Chunin exams. Otherwise, the third Hokage could have become the first Hokage to be overthrown by his own people. Even Kakashi, who should have been a loyal supporter of the Hokage, was suppressed and couldn't go to support the third Hokage during Orochimaru's attack. Not to mention the other ninja clans. Hum, if I think about it this way, could it be that Orochimaru's true intention is to give his teacher, the third Hokage, a perfect ending? The attack on the root base had a significant impact. Although many high-level ninjas were unaware of the dirty deeds of the root allowing the enemy to enter Kanoha village so brazenly, destroy one of Kanoha's subordinate organizations, and then leave so openly. It was like a slap in the face to the Kanoha shinobi. The police department has once again become the target to vent, enduring the curses of the people of Kanoha village. There's no way around it. They are much weaker compared to the Ichiha police department of the past. Tonight, there is no telling how many people have begun to miss the past when the Ichiha police department maintained the security of Kanoha. Then they couldn't help but curse Tachi again why did he have to kill all the Achiha? Even the high-ranking officials like the third Hokage and Danzo are cursing their own Anbu and Root members because they couldn't uncover the details of this incident and catch the mastermind. What a joke. A cage-level expert like Natsuo attacked a small Root base alone. It would be strange if they could find a trail leading to him. Then, the Kanoha council gathered and scolded Danzo with a few words. After that, the third Hokage's expression became serious. Danzo, I think this attacker must have targeted you. Do you have any clues? Natsuo's words, as well as his deliberate use of the fire release to attract countless ninjas to the scene, prove that there is bad blood between him and Danzo. Danzo pondered for a while. 
people who hold a grudge against me. Let me think the Inuzuka clan's Inuzuka Hana should count because my root accidentally made his classmate go dumb during the investigation of his memories. Hyuga Nan, a member of the Hyuga clan, should also count because her sister accidentally discovered my root's research laboratory with her Byakugan, and I silently killed her. If she finds out about this, she should count too. The Kazakirge of Sunagaka should also be counted because he recently guided the fire country merchants to lower the purchase price of saying gold, which put Sunagaka in extreme financial danger. The people of Awakaga Dan, there are too many, it's hard to count. Danzo S face turned dark. He thought and thought as if the whole world had a grudge against him as if anyone could have done this. Can't you find possible suspects? The third Hokage frowned. The person who can kill the guards and quickly retreat before reinforcements arrive must have at least the strength of an elite Jonin. Consider that some people may be hiding their true strength so expand the range to Jonin. Don't consider the possibility of someone deliberately investigating your root research lab. Then he should be someone who has recently had a conflict with you. Danzo, have you had any conflicts with any Jonin in the past three months? The information about Root is not difficult to find unless someone has been deliberately investigating the Root research lab for years or even decades. Otherwise, it's because they recently had a conflict with Danzo and attacked out of anger, thus accidentally discovering the lab. Considering the tone of the written message left behind and some details of the investigation, the third Hokage believed it should be the latter. Danzo, how many Jonin have you had conflicts with recently? The third Hokage asked. Danzo fell silent for a moment, and then raised his hands. 10. The third Hokage squinted his eyes. His old teammate was indeed bold, offending so many people in just three months. And they were Jonin. Even for rich and powerful Konoha, high-ranking officials are very few, and it is very troublesome to investigate so many Jonin. There are too many candidates, it's going to be difficult to uncover the truth. Even if the Ambu work tirelessly, there's only a small chance they can solve this. Who would have thought that Danzo would shake his head and say, 10 fingers are not enough to count. The third Hokage. This is so awkward. If before it was already difficult to investigate because there were many suspects, much less so now that Danzo can't even be sure how many people he has antagonized in the last three months. It is impossible to find the culprit. What's the point of investigating? But I think the culprit should be someone from Kanoha village, perhaps a member of the ninja clan, Danzo thought for a moment and then said, I don't have any particular reason that can confirm it. It's just my intuition. He really believed it should be like this. Although his enemies are spread throughout the ninja world, both inside and outside the village. But he just felt that it was done by someone from within the village. The only question is who the Inuzuka clan, the Yamanaka clan, the Hayuga clan. He thought of many prominent clans, but he never considered the Achiha. After all, there are only two members of the Achiha clan left, and they don't have the ability to do such a thing. And even Itachi wouldn't risk Sasuke being implicated for this kind of incident. Putting aside his own strength, I doubt they would dare hire ninjas from outside the village to carry out this attack. Also, after the attack on Natsuo, I can no longer make moves against them again within the village. Danzo thought to himself, even if they had the power to do so, why would they suddenly attack my root base? If for the moment we can be at peace in the village, although Danzo still thinks that the best Ichiha is the dead Ichiha, but after the genocide, Danzo no longer pays much attention to the Ichiha clan. He is now more focused on competing with the third Hokage. After all, there are only a few Ichiha left, they pose almost no threat. If it weren't for his instinctive fear of the Ichiha clan, he wouldn't have even attempted to assassinate Natsuo. I didn't provoke the Ichiha, so how could they possibly do such a thing, right? I think it should be the ninja clan. I just don't know which one, Danzo said seriously. I feel that apart from the Achiha clan, the others have some suspicion. Of course, the third Hokage didn't take such nonsense seriously. If it were the Kanoha ninja clan, there would not be many qualified enough to carry out such an act. Moreover, I had the Anbu investigate, there were only a few elite Jonin without alibis at the time, and they have no significant relationship with you. The third Hokage shook his head, after all, we are well aware of the village's top experts. The top experts of the ninja clan wouldn't be hidden by their families all the time. They also need to come forward to fight for the interests of their families. So naturally, they are known to the higher-ups of Kanova. The sudden appearance of a powerful expert the possibility is too small. I think the suspicion is greater on the other shinobi villages. They want to sow discord between Kanoha village and the ninja clan. The third Hokage said in a deep voice, everyone, it has been more than 10 years since the third great shinobi war, maybe this time. It's a precursor to the fourth great shinobi war. Yutatane Kaharu and Mitakado Hamura instantly became alert upon hearing this. This possibility is very high. It has been more than 10 years since the third great shinobi war. The new generation of shinobi has grown up, 
and the strength of the major countries has also recovered significantly. Ambitious shinobis like those from the Kumogaka might have already started planning for the next great shinobi war. It is not normal for them to try to sow discord between the ninja clan and Kinoha, but it is also not impossible for them to carry out such an operation. Danzo, don't target the ninja clan anymore during this time, and don't think about revenge. The third Hokage said without hesitation, his expression extremely serious. Now that a major war is approaching, Kinoha needs unity. Danzo nodded, I understand. The third Hokage was not joking, he had indeed discovered a crisis. Today, Kinoha is in a state of decay. The older generation, such as Yutaten Kaharu and Mitsukado Hamura, have completely lost their combat power, and only care about power struggles. Danzo is eyeing the position of Hokage. He is old and Tsunade and Jiraiya are not in the village. Even the strongest of the next generation, Kakashi, has not grown up yet. Perhaps the other ninja villages have identified Kanoha's weakness, and want to start a major war. At the very least, they are preparing for a major war. Therefore, without hesitation, the third Hokage decides to unite Kanoha. He sets aside the policies that suppress the ninja clans, and uses one hand to appease the clans with benefits, and the other hand to intimidate everyone with the news of an upcoming fourth great war. Soon, the news spreads throughout Kinoha that ambitious conspirators are plotting against Kinoha, trying to weaken it and start a war. For a while, the atmosphere in Kinoha is tense, and passers-by have a look of pressure on their faces. Because what the third Hokage said makes sense, after more than 10 years of recovery, all the countries have almost recovered, and the number of ninjas has also returned to normal. And every time there is a great ninja war, it is usually at a time like this. War. It could really happen at any time. As a political mastermind, his methods quickly take effect. Although the ninja clans are angry, they also understand the importance of unity in Kanoha. After gaining some benefits, they no longer pursue Danzo's responsibility too much. After all, their own people are also on the battlefield. The Ambu and Root ninjas are all mobilized by the third Hokish to infiltrate enemy countries and gather intelligence to prevent any unforeseen events. Kanoha enters a tense preparation phase. Kanoha begins to enter a tense preparation phase. Ninja tools and food prices rise, and even the Ninja Academy starts to conduct multiple evacuation drills to be prepared for any unforeseen events. And strangely enough, the Achiha story that Natsuo deliberately spread some time ago has become popular for no reason. Countless people are discussing. What if the first Hokage had agreed to Achiha Madara's proposal? Wouldn't there be a war now? After all, with the power of the first Hokage and Achiha Madara, they could definitely conquer the other four major countries. If the entire ninja world only had Kanoha, wouldn't that be great? Those bastards from the four major countries, they were let go by the first Hokage, and as soon as he died, they started a war. If I were the first Hokage, I would have directly wiped out those countries. No need to worry about future generations for these enemies. I think the first Hokage was too naive. He thought that a balance of power would lead to mutual understanding and no more wars. It's just wishful thinking. Even Ichiha Madara's father knew that only interests can truly make people take action. Yeah, the first Hokage was too soft-hearted. Not only did he not wipe them out, but he also sold the tailed beasts to other ninja villages. In the last war, I was almost killed by the Bijadama of the Two Tails. Senju Hashirama and Achiha Madara, two people wiping out four countries. It would have been great if the first Hokage had listened to Achiha Madara. Countless people let out a collective sigh. Achiha Madara probably never imagined that after decades, the people of Kanova would miss him so much. They even looked down on the first Hokage and respect him more. I wonder if he knew about this in the Pure Land. Would he feel very comforted? The reason why the people of Kanoha suddenly like the character of Ichiha Madara in this story is mainly because they feel that they are about to go to the battlefield. Ichiha Madara wants to annex the other four shinobi nations, permanently eliminate the threat, and establish a system centered on Kanoha. Regardless of the consequences this may have on other countries, it is definitely a big plus for the shinobi of Kanoha. The most direct benefit is that they don't have to risk their lives on the battlefield themselves. Therefore, both the ninjas who are about to go to the battlefield and their loved ones praised Ichiha Madara and privately expressed. The first Hokage was really nosy. Ichiha Madara had proposed such a good suggestion. Even if you don't accept it, you can let him complete this mission himself. Now, look at what you have left for the Kanohu Shinobi. The four nations you left behind have become enemies of Kanoha and have nearly laid siege to Kanoha in almost every Shinobi World War. If it weren't for the ninja villages starting to backstab each other, Kanoha would no longer exist. The tailed beasts that you sold to other ninja villages have also been on the battlefield several times, causing heavy losses to the entire ninja world. Why can't you just listen to Ichiha Madara's words? Look how true they are now. Countless ninja sighed. Of course, such politically incorrect words definitely cannot appear in public. The first Hokage is great and farsighted. He did this for the sake of peace. But in private, everyone couldn't help but complain with a few words about the first Hokage. In fact, not to mention these ninjas who have never seen the first Hokage, even the older generation of ninja who admired and willingly served under the first Hokage to build Kanoha together, 
couldn't help but complain a few words about the first Hokage. It is the descendants of many of them who would have to go to the battlefield. Why did we spare the lives of the other four nations back then? So, under these special conditions, Ichiha Madara, who was forcibly expelled from Kinoha by countless people in the past, unexpectedly gained a large number of fans. Some people support him because they are about to go to the battlefield and support the ideals of peace. That Ichiha Madara mentioned in the story told by Natsuo. Other people admire Ichiha Madara's dominant style in the story. Even Danzo, who should have been banned, openly stated, if I had a say back then, I would definitely support Ichiha Madara's proposal and let the first Hokage unify the ninja world and bring true peace. Of course, as the representative of the Hawk faction, his main intention is to express that the first generation was wrong, and he and the second generation made a mistake by choosing the indecisive third Hokage. They should have chosen me back then. You should support me now too. If I become Hokage, I will definitely unify the ninja world with force like Ichiha Madara, and create peace without leaving regrets for future generations. You all should come and support me. Don't make the same mistakes as the first generation and the second generation. After Shimura Danzo made this declaration, he actually gained a group of supporters. The dark clouds of the impending war were already oppressive, and many shinobis and civilian who were tired of the endless wars of the ninja world chose to join Danzo and speak up for him. For a while, even the negative impact brought by the recent root incident was greatly reduced. The third Hokage was not to be outdone. He immediately gave an inspiring speech. Although he didn't explicitly say it, he vaguely implied, Fellow Konoha members, please fight hard and don't let our descendants in the future blame our weakness like we do now. Although he didn't mention I want to learn from Ichiha Madara, he was still talking about the same thing. Of course, whether it was the third Hokage or Shimura Danzo, or many older generations ninja, they didn't really think that the first Hokage was wrong back then. The situation back then was different from now. The village system had just started, and many systems were not yet perfected. The trust between ninjas was very low, even among ninjas from the same village. Many were long-standing enemies, and there was no unified external environment like now. Was it being soft-hearted to spare the four nations? But the second Hokage Senju Toborama, who also belonged to the Hawk faction, supported the first Hokage's decision to spare the four nations back then. Senju Toborama believed that ninjas were born for war, and once they lost enemies, the main source of income for ninjas, which was war missions, would no longer exist. They never expected that the entire ninja world would be engulfed, and that Kanova would be under siege by the four nations with bloodshed every time. The older generation of ninjas only complained because their children and grandchildren were about to go to war. Whether it was the third Hokage or Shimura Danzo, they both knew deep down that the first Hokage had made the right decision back then, and that Kanoha was not prepared to unify the ninja world. But that didn't stop them from putting up signs that said fight like a Chihamadara, fight with unwavering determination, and leave no regrets for future generations to boost the morale of the ninjas. There was a lot of activity in Kanoha's preparations for war, and the news quickly spread to other countries. The sentiment of missing Ichiha Madara also spread along with the news of Kanoha's preparations in a way that confused Natsuo. From Kanoha, it spread to the Land of Fire. And from the Land of Fire, it spread to the Awagaka, the Kumogaka after receiving the intelligence about Kanoha's war preparations, the four nations immediately became alert. They understood, just like the third Hokage did, that the fourth great ninja war could very well break out after more than a decade of rest. So, they all gave public speeches to boost morale and inspire their people. The fourth Hokage, A, said, We, Kumogaka, will never be indecisive like the first Hokage. When we strike, we strike to kill. The great shinobi of Kumogaka will not leave any regrets for future generations. Prepare yourselves for battle. The second Tsuchikage, Onoki, said even Ichiha Madara couldn't defeat the Will of Stone of the Awagaka back then. Now it's time for a Will of Stone to defeat Kanoha. We will not make the same mistakes as the first Hokage. The fourth Kazakiage, Rasa, said. The harsh environment of the Land of Wind has forged our resilient character. Every shinobi of Sunagako will not be as weak as the first Hokage. We will become resolute warriors like Ichiha Madara. Even the smaller countries, though they didn't have much presence, also voiced their opinions. Of course, most of what they said was along the lines of even Ichiha Madara couldn't conquer us back then. So you great nations have even less chance now to strengthen the fighting spirit of their own ninjas. But more or less, they all mentioned Ichiha Madara. For a moment, Ichiha Madara became the idol of the entire ninja world. Every ninja could hear his story. Even the members of Akatsuki understood the ideals of this legendary ninja. Kissam sighed deeply, his expression complicated. Peace. Huh, perhaps his idea is the most realistic and likely to be achieved. Perhaps there will be many sacrifices, Sasori said calmly. But it would be justified if it is possible to achieve peace. Although I was spared by the first Hokage back then, I should acknowledge his intentions. Kakuzu said in a low voice, but his indecisiveness is one of the main culprits behind the current great ninja war and the suffering of countless lives. Conan remained silent. In a peaceful world, tragedies like ours might not happen, right? Nagato couldn't help but stare at Abito for a long time. 
then sighed deeply and spoke. Did you also want to establish rules with force and interests, just like me? Isn't this similar to how I wanted to restrain the ninja world with the power of the ten tails? Abito looked embarrassed and quickly responded. Ah, yes, yes, we're all on the same page. You have inherited my will and have these eyes that were born for this purpose. You will definitely do better. However, privately, Atachi and Toby exchanged glances. Toby, did that old man really think that way? Why did I hear him say that he was killed by the first Hokage? Because he wanted to use infinite Tsukuyomi. Atachi, as the son of the clan leader, how come I didn't know that a clan also recorded this little story? But that guy who called himself a Chiha Madara admitted it. So maybe this story is true. And as the instigator of everything, Natsuo was completely dumbfounded. I just made up a story. Now everyone wants to become a Chiha Madara fans. This situation has really exceeded my expectations. Natsuo helplessly slapped his forehead. Ichiha Madara has unexpectedly become a popular figure, admired by the entire ninja world. And the ninja world was filled with the smell of gunpowder, with an atmosphere that seemed as if a war could break out at any moment. This is completely different from the original story. Natsuo understands that this is his own butterfly effect. Because he has attacked Danzo twice, causing Kanoha to feel a great sense of crisis. And Kanoha's increased security has also raised the vigilance of other countries. Spies from all sides are frantically dispatched, conducting mutual surveillance, and the hidden struggles instantly escalate. The ninja world has been resting for a long time, so it's not surprising that a major war could break out at any time. In fact, in the original plot, if it were not for the fact that during the Chunin exams three years later, the Kazakage and the third Hokage were killed by Orochimaru, causing both ninja villages to lose their leaders at the same time. The Fourth Great Shinobi War would have broken out at any moment. Don't be fooled by the fact that the Fourth Great Ninja War was a joint effort of the five great nations against Akatsuki. In reality, if Abito could wait a few more years, the ninja world would have started fighting on its own when their strength becomes formidable. They naturally want to gain more benefits, which will naturally lead to more conflicts. All nations have rested and recovered to some extent, so it's time to act. Well, I still got a lot of benefits in this last attack on root space. It's better to use those precious materials and research equipment, and not continue to provoke Danzo and the others. Natsuo thought, lest Danzo reacts in an extreme way, and interrupts my plan to revive the Achiha clan. Natsuo dug a large hole underground beneath the Achiha maternity center and put up a warning barrier. Then threw all the things he got from Danzo into it, especially Fugaku and Makoto's eyes, he kept them carefully. And Yuzumaki Kishina's blood, he placed it together with the above two items in the safest core location. As for materials like Namika's Minato's bone marrow, they were in a secondary position. Take good care of them, maybe I can revive Yuzumaki Kishina in the future. After arranging various instruments, connecting the power supply, and properly storing the materials, Natsuo finally began his own research. I don't need to seek immortality like Orochimaru does. Natsuo thought. What I need to investigate is how I can give ordinary ninjas more powerful abilities. Things like the Manjekyo Sharingan, Sage Mode, and Wood Style that Orochimaru hopes to obtain are not Natsuo's goals at all. Even if these things can be researched, can they be used by Natsuo's wives, who only have the strength of Chunin? Can they control them? That's a joke. My first goal will temporarily be to develop my own version of Orochimaru's Curse Seal. As a low-level substitute for Sage Mode, although the amplification is weaker, it is enough to give Chunin level ninjas the combat power of Jonin level. However, while Orochimaru doesn't hesitate to use the Curse Seal on his subordinates, Natsuo must reduce the mortality rate of the Curse Seal and make it safe and controllable. Jugo's cells are already in place, and I can also observe Anko's curse seal up close. Isn't it easy to copy Orochimaru's work? Let's get started. While Natsuo was busy with his research, the scent of gunpowder in the ninja world intensified. The Anbu and the Root have already come into conflict several times on the borders of the other major countries. Due to the large number of enemies, they often find themselves at a disadvantage. At this time, even the ninja clan no longer demands severe punishment for Danzo because Danzo has always been Kanova's sharpest weapon both internally and externally, and is very powerful. Although the third Hokage's ban has not been lifted, Danzo has already left and officially taken control of the route, and the Shinobi of Ninja Clan have also started to support missions outside. Finally, they fought on equal terms with other major countries. The scent of gunpowder within Kanoha village is also strong, with the prices of ninja tools continuously rising, and the prices of minerals also increasing, allowing the Achiha who manage mines to make a fortune. Although Natsuo is distracted by his research, the revival of the Achiha clan, his main job, has not been delayed. Due to the thick smell of gunpowder, some Kinochis who are not good at fighting, 
have taken on the task of having children to revive the Achiha clan, hoping that by marrying into the Achiha clan, they will no longer be sent to the battlefield. As a result, Natsuo's harem has once again expanded, making the third Hokage so angry that he wants to cancel the Achiha clan's mission. But they are all ninjas. At this time, when facing an impending war, manpower is precious. War is about to begin again. Yuhi Kurunai sighed softly, touching her swollen belly, with a face full of lamentation. I hope it doesn't break out too soon, otherwise, how can I go to the battlefield in this state? You have it easy. You're not a relatively powerful ninja anyway. Her best friend, Anko, also sighed. I'm more worried about Natsuo. Natsuo is a jonin. Once the war breaks out, the village won't let him stay at home. Then of the Achiha clan, only one adult ninja remains. But this is also the fate of a ninja. They have no choice. They can only sigh like everyone else and say. If the first Hokage had listened to Achiha Madara back then, it would have been better and end the topic. Yuhi Kurunai sighed lightly, she was also very worried about this issue. After all, he is the father of the child in her belly. And thinking about Natsuo, Yuhi Kurunai's face suddenly turned red. But speaking of which, Kurunai Enko suddenly leaned over. Yuhi Kurunai was startled. What are you doing? Nothing. I just noticed that you suddenly blushed. Are you thinking about a husband? Anko smirked. If you want, should I call him over for you? You're pregnant and need attention right now. Yuhi Kurunai gave Anko a glare. He's your husband. I didn't marry into the Ichiha clan. But I see you two being quite intimate. Anko covered her mouth and smirked. Yuhi Kurunai looked embarrassed. Although they couldn't do anything because of the pregnancy, cuddling and hugging seemed to have become a habit. After all, he is the father of the child in my belly. Can I not let him listen to the baby's movements? Yuhi Kurunai wasn't lacking in money, and had a proud personality. Natsuo would never force her, but as a father, it was only natural for him to listen to the baby's movements, right? When listening, he had to put his head against her belly, right? To prevent the pregnant woman from getting tired from inconvenient movements, it was reasonable to put his arm around her waist, right? After cuddling, it was normal to carry her back to the room, right? And occasionally, when she found it difficult to move, he would feed her a few bites of food, worry about the water being too hot, and help test the temperature with his lips, help her with a towel when it was inconvenient to take a bath. Although it seemed like they hadn't done anything, it was all normal, but it felt like they were just a step away from doing something more intimate. Yes, yes, you're right. Anko nodded with a grin. I believe you, you two are pure. Even if you hug my handsome husband every day, I believe you don't have any other thoughts. Even if my husband has eight-pack abs, a well-defined chest, beautiful lines, and broad shoulders. But I completely trust you. I believe you've never thought about touching him. Feeling the hardness of those muscles. Yuhi Koronai. I'm not a pervert. Yuhi Koronai rolled her eyes. But even she had to admit that although Natsuo had a harem, it made independent women like her somewhat resistant. But his appearance was really outstanding. An extremely beautiful appearance, coupled with a perfectly toned body, as well as having the charisma to make women laugh uncontrollably. It was actually pretty good. Because of that, she slowly began to accept Natsuo. But at least she could still show some posture, not to the point of looking at her beautiful appearance and acting like a pervert. Karen, that little girl, was the real pervert. A few days ago, she caught the little girl peeking at Natsuo while he was taking a bath. She was about to scold her, but Karen hurriedly ran off and went into the bathroom. Yuhi Kurunai approached out of curiosity and heard some strange sounds, and her expression instantly became one of shock. How old is she under Natsuo's persistent efforts? Before long, Yuzumaki Yoko also became pregnant. After Yuzumaki Yoko found out that she had become pregnant, she was finally able to breathe a sigh of relief. After what both she and her daughter went through in Kusagika, she felt a sense of crisis all the time. But now that she was expecting Natsuo's child, she now felt like she could be part of his family. During this time, she sought favors in various ways, and Natsuo also always agreed. But it's unknown whether it was because her body was too weak before, she unexpectedly didn't get pregnant for a long time. Now, she has finally succeeded, and she also breathed a sigh of relief. It's just that she subconsciously distanced herself from Karen, perhaps feeling that it was unfair to Karen. She didn't want her to see her growing belly. Natsuo, on the other hand, felt quite regretful. Yuzumaki Yoko herself is not bad looking, but her body that was too weak made her not look as beautiful. But with the slow recuperation in the Achiha family, she finally regained the normal physique of a Kyunochi. Her charm is very captivating. Now that she's pregnant, it's a bit of a pity that she can't do anything more however, her child is obviously even more anticipated. Meanwhile, Natsuo is worrying about something. The Achiha clan's money is a bit tight, Natsuo was a bit confused, but upon careful consideration, it doesn't seem so strange. With the approaching war, prices are rising, consumption is decreasing, and the Achiha clan 
man's income is inevitably affected, and expenses have increased instead. In order to escape the war, a large number of Kinuchi chose to marry into the Achiha clan, and the rewards they received were quite substantial. At the same time, Orochimaru's rewards were also a large sum, as he didn't need ninjutsu, and his monetary compensation was double that of a regular jonin. In addition, there were some valuable instruments that Natsuo had previously purchased, although he had already obtained them from the root, he couldn't return them. Because that would be telling Konoha that he was the one who attacked the root. At the same time, the demand for Natsuo's children was increasing. His first child is now two years old, and is about to receive basic ninja education. The cost of medicinal baths, harmless toy ninja tools, various entertainment facilities, all of these expenses, add up to quite a sum. With all these expenses, even Natsuo, who inherited the wealth of the Achiha clan, began to run out of money. I need to make money. Natsuo sighed. I never thought that even after inheriting so much wealth, I still can't escape the need to earn a living for my family. However, he was met with a disdainful look from his wife, Yukino. Have you ever thought about how many children you have? In any case, there was no other way. It was for the sake of supporting his family. First, he reviewed the current state of the Achiha clan's assets. Affected by the war, the rental income of shops in the Land of Fire had declined and the profits of merchant caravans had greatly decreased. Although there were increases in profits from mining and weapon trading, overall, the income from these inherited assets of the Achiha clan was on a downward trend. Of course, it wasn't just the Achiha clan's income that was declining, other ninja clans were also not faring well and the entire Kanoha felt the depression. On the other hand, the Achiha Entertainment Street that Natsuo himself established became a unique phenomenon of prosperity in Kanoha's economy. The more chaotic the war, the more prosperous these places became. Because many people were living day by day, not knowing if they would see the sun rise again, they naturally wanted to enjoy themselves when they had the chance. Currently, the shinobi were in a phase of crazy consumption. Of course, most of the people who spend money to vent are men. After all, it's too easy for women to find a one-night stand. Even slightly unattractive women can easily find someone to hook up with. It seems like I have to focus on women as my target. Natsuo thought to himself. Male shinobis never know when they will leave the village for a mission, so the housewives are the main force behind spending during this time. Then he started working in the home appliance and cosmetics business. He placed cosmetics and skincare products in the club, and had his employees promote them to young women, who are more interested in maintaining their beauty. He also placed coffee makers, fans, hair dryers, and other home appliances in the club. But instead of promoting them, he actively let the housewives experience the feeling of using these appliances, thereby arousing their desire to purchase. In reality, these devices had been developed a long time ago in this world. In the original work, we can see that when Naruto graduated from ninja school, he took a box of expired milk out of the refrigerator. But even though they had been developed, because shinobi have a conservative mind and are more concerned with training their strength, their use has not become popular with everyone. Natsuo aimed at this market gap. While acquiring other factories, he also built his own research institute to develop more modern household appliances. Natsuo looked at the young man below and thought to himself, Moreover, I have also found a dependable researcher. Tono Katasuke, I appoint you as director of the Achiha Research Center. I hope you can research more advanced motors as soon as possible, with low noise high efficiency and energy saving as standards, and strive to improve the performance of the products we have now yes. Lord Natsuo, I will do my best. Tono Katasuke said excitedly. You may go now, work well. Yes. Lord Natsuo. Tono Katasuke respectfully said, his heart filled with passion, but he left Natsuo's office in a submissive manner. He was just a young man, about 16 or 17 years old. His ninja rank was only Jenin, and in Kanoha, he could be considered trash, just slightly better than ordinary civilians. Such a weak and inexperienced young man was noticed by the patriarch of the Achiha clan, Natsuo, receiving a large salary and being appointed director of the Achiha Research Center. It was obviously a huge blessing. Lord Natsuo values me so much, I must not let him down. Tono Katasuke secretly vowed to himself. He didn't know it. But Natsuo was also extremely happy. I have found a treasure, Natsuo thought to himself. But who could have imagined that this weak young man was a genuine scientific genius? Tono Katasuke, the genius scientist of Konohagaka, head of the Special Department for Scientific Ninja Tools, Ninja Rank, Tokyobetsu Jonin. In simple terms, this guy was the creator of the scientific ninja tools in Baruto, and he was also a doctor in engineering, medicine, health sciences, ninjutsu, and more. However, no matter how strong a genius is, they will have periods of weakness. Despite his great achievements in developing scientific ninja tools in the future, he was only a special jonin. Clearly, his own strength was severely lacking and was holding him back. Right now, he was just a small jonin, slightly better than someone like Mike Guy. 
but still looked down upon. But the weakness of his own strength did not affect his research talent. What Natsuo saw was his talent. I can entrust the industrial side to him. There should be no problem. Tono Katasuke's representative work was scientific ninja tools, mainly specializing in industry, unlike Orochimaru, who was an all-around researcher. But it was enough. One month later, the Achiha clan received good news. Yui Koronai gave birth. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 121, you gain plus 10 mental power would release secret technique. Nativity of a world of trees. This is the boost brought by Yuhi Kuranai's son. The plus 10 bonus to mental power is equivalent to the combined power of 5 or 6 ordinary children. This is probably what a genius ninja looks like. Natsuo sighed in his heart. Compared to Yuzuki Yugao, Yuhi Kuranai is slightly stronger in strength and slightly more talented. Coupled with Natsuo's own growth, the potential of the child has increased significantly. Even the rewarded ninjutsu has improved a lot. Would release secret technique. Nativity of a world of trees. This is Senja Hashirama's ninjutsu. Natsuo thought to himself. He found a place to evaluate it when he had some free time, and its power was indeed impressive. However, it consumes a lot of chakra, and Natsuo still cannot match the level at which the first Hokage releases this jutsu. But as Natsuo continues to grow, he will soon be able to catch up with the first Hokage. By then, the power of his wood release will be able to match that of Senja Hashirama, or could even be even stronger. After Yuhi Kurenai gave birth to her son, several wives also gave birth one after another. Among them are several Jonin level Kinochi. However, even though they are Jonin level Kinochi, their talent seems to be far inferior to Yuhi Kurenai and Jizuki Yugao. Their average evaluation score is around 80, with the highest score being 95. Although they have surpassed Natsuo's first wives, they have not yet surpassed the 100 point mark. Naturally, Natsuo accompanied his wives one by one, making them smile and assuring them that he would take care of them and their children. However, Yui Kuranai's expression seemed a bit gloomy. After giving birth, it seemed like she no longer had any reason to stay in the Ichiha clan. At this moment, a large hand gently grabbed her hand. Kuranai, Natsuo's eyes were deep, his voice full of sincerity. Can you stay a little longer? Just consider it as staying to accompany me. Yui Kuranai turned her head and said, I don't want to join your harem. This is not the life I want. Is that so? In the end, I'm still not good enough for you. Natsuo smiled bitterly. But even if you don't consider yourself, you should consider the child, right? He has just been born and needs the company of his parents and intimate care. Can you stay for him? Yuhi Kuranai opened her mouth, looking at Natsuo's pleading expression, and her heart softened. Very well. I'm doing it for the child. After all, the Achiha clan's childcare system is the most complete, and so far, there hasn't been a single problem. The Achiha clan has never spared any expense in recruiting people from Kanoha Hospital. When it comes to maternal and child safety and care, it has always had the best of the best. Achiha babies are not without sudden illnesses or difficult deliveries. Although Natsuo takes good care of them, with the increasing number, occasional problems do occur. But the costly medical care ensures that every child is born healthy, and so far, there has not been a single stillbirth. Every child grows up healthy and happy every day. In fact, these children receive rewards from the system the moment they are born. The future life and death, strength and weakness of the children will not affect Natsuo's strength, but they are still his own children. Natsuo naturally wants to take good care of them. For this reason, Yuhi Kuranai feels that it is very reasonable for her to stay in the Ichiha clan for a while longer. Thank you Kuranai. Natsuo said, instantly turning from bitterness to happiness, showing a sincere smile. He tightly embraced her delicate body, his arms exerting force, as if he wanted to merge her into his own body. The corners of Natsuo's mouth lifted, clearly happy. But she said, I'm only doing this for the child, don't think too much. However, she didn't see Natsuo's smile becoming meaningful, for the child. Could it be that the Kanova hospital is so much worse than the Ichiha family's child rearing? How is that possible? If she really wanted to leave, she would have to take care of so many problems. But now that she will stay in the Ichiha clan because it has a complete childcare system, she no longer has to worry about anything. When the boy grows up, will he have to stay longer because of the boy's future ninja education? When the child gets a little older, will you have to stay longer for the child to have a complete family? Now that you've entered the Ichiha clan, do you still want to run away? Natsuo smiled and remained silent. Ichiha clan reception room. So, they really made a move. Natsuo raised an eyebrow. Just a few ordinary people daring to provoke Shinobi. Natsuo's new business in the home appliance industry had just begun to develop, and the Ichiha clan's assets were under attack again. And what they targeted was not something else but the most profitable metal mines and weapons industry in the current atmosphere of war. The official authorities of the Fire Country directly seized the Ichiha clan's mines under the pretext of strategic reservists. Yes, Miao, but facing the power of the authorities, it's difficult for us to take action, Miao. Miao-san, an old acquaintance of Ichiha Natsuo, licked his paw and said, It is said that who is behind this movement is not the nobles or merchants of the Country of Fire, but it is the daimyo himself who directs it, Miao, the daimyo. 
Huh? Natsuo squinted his eyes. It seems that it's not just me who's short of money, even the daimyo has started to need some money-making methods. With the war approaching, the fire country naturally had to fully support Kanoha, and a series of expenses were beginning to put a strain on the fire country's finances. Even the leader of the fire country, the daimyo, was becoming poor. And what do you do when the leader of the fire country becomes poor? Of course, you find a way to make some money. It seems they have forgotten the deterrent power of Itachi, but it's not surprising, after all, some time has passed. Natsuo nodded, showing understanding. Although the Achiha clan relied on Itachi's crazy killings to deter a group of people, any deterrent has a time limit. Now everyone is poor, under the stimulation of poverty. They naturally forget the fear they had at that time. Moreover, with the emergence of Akatsuki, many people felt that it was not the Achiha who were terrifying. But Akatsuki was strong. The Achiha clan was left with only one adult member. How could they deserve to occupy such a good industry? The desire in their hearts slowly turned into action, ultimately resulting in suppression from the authorities. Natsuo, what should we do? Meow. Meow san raised his head curiously. It seems we can't rely on Akatsuki's power this time. I heard they are very busy now. Yes, there is that. Natsuo nodded. Even Kakuzu has considered taking leave because there are too many missions now, many of which have good rewards. The most profitable ones in war are naturally the military groups. Not only Akatsuki, even the Kanoha Shinobi have become busy. One expensive mission after another keeps coming up. Even if Natsuo wants to hire Akatsuki to solve the problem, they wouldn't be able to spare any manpower. In that case, there's no other way. Natsuo sighed helplessly. Miao san nodded. Yes, the daimyo has made a move, and Shinobi cannot attack the daimyo. It seems we can only take a step back. Natsuo, it seems we can only get rid of that idiot daimyo. Miao san. Ah, you want to kill the daimyo? Miao san's eyes widened, its soft fur standing on end as if it were startled. Yes, is that strange? Natsuo replied calmly. Of course, it's strange. Miao san jumped up in surprise. How can a ninja kill the daimyo. Natsuo raised an eyebrow and asked in return, why not? But he is a person with enormous influence. How can you attack him? Miao san was astonished and quickly said, Natsuo, don't do this. We can actually use the Konohagaka's channels to negotiate with them. Please don't go to extremes listening to this. Natsuo just smirked. The ninja world is strange. As people with enormous power, ninjas must still treat daimyo and other national leaders as if they were superior to them. Even Sunagaka, constantly affected by reduced financial support, did not consider putting pressure on the daimyo. Not only Sunagaka, even the rogue ninjas were very careful before even threatening the daimyo's safety. In the original work, a group of wandering ninjas called Watari Ninjas had to spend a lot of time carrying out a complex conspiracy in order to have the opportunity to take over the land of birds. But despite having the power to easily kill ordinary people, they always hesitated before doing anything to the nobles or the daimyo. Natsuo asked, why can't we kill the daimyo? Miao san naturally replied, the daimyo is a noble, of course we can't attack him. It hasn't come to that point, right? Yes, the main reason they couldn't do this was ridiculously based on the nobility of the daimyo. Of course, this is not surprising, because the ninja world is a world based on a feudal system. Because Natsuo is a transmigrant, of course something like nobility wouldn't stop him. But he's also not foolish enough to ignore the enormous influence the daimyo have on the world. As long as he does not have the power to wipe out the entire ninja world, he cannot openly go and threaten or kill the daimyo. If someone dares to attack the Achiha clan, then it's only right that someone retaliates, isn't it? Natsuo's mouth curved into a smile. Miao Sen felt extremely anxious. His common sense told him that he shouldn't let Natsuo do this. But it couldn't stop Natsuo, so it could only say, Then Natsuo, how about I ask Akatsuki I can offer them more rewards, maybe they will accept your mission. It's useless. Natsuo shook his head. We can't afford it for now. Attacking the daimyo, as the leader of the country, is equivalent to attacking the entire nation, and would lead to hostility from the entire country. Even for mercenaries like Akatsuki, attacking the daimyo is a different level of mission compared to eliminating officials and nobles. The Achiha clan is indeed wealthy. Even though Natsuo spent a lot and also diversified into the home appliance industry, he still has several hundred million in cash. But this level of mission reward is not something that can be solved with just several hundred million. He can't come up with this reward. I have to do it myself dressed in black. Natsuo walked slowly towards the capital of the fire country. Before leaving, under Miao San's numerous requests, he finally relented and said he could negotiate with the daimyo to see if they could resolve the issue. If the negotiation goes well, he will be there for communication. If the negotiation fails, he will be there to kill. Of course, as the leader of the Achiha clan, Achiha Natsuo would never do something as dangerous as threatening the daimyo. Only someone as cruel and arrogant as Achiha Itachi would do such a thing. So Natsuo transformed into the face of Achiha Itachi, wearing the uniform of Akatsuki, and even wore the forehead protector with a scratched out symbol. This outfit is quite fitting. He walked straight towards the palace where the daimyo resided. And soon, the guards stopped him. Wot who are you? 
The guard asked arrogantly. What are you doing here? Natsuo calmly replied. I am here to see the daimyo. Oh, pay respects to the lord. Do you have a letter of request for an audience? The guard hesitated and asked. I don't have a letter. No letter? Then are you from a noble family? Not really. Do you dare to come to see the lord without saying anything? Do you think he can see anyone? The guard exclaimed. Oh, he will receive me. Natsuo slowly raised his head revealing a pair of sinister Sharingan. I am at Chiharitachi the next second. Boom. Intense flames soared into the sky, accompanied by a loud explosion. The deafening sound was heard clearly even by the lord inside the tower. He trembled and angrily shouted, Who is it? Go and see what happened. Yes. Immediately, guards appeared and went to investigate. At the same time, several ninjas appeared, standing beside the daimyo. Their eyes showed a hint of vigilance and surprise. They also knew that the ninja world had been in turmoil recently, with conflicts between major countries, on the surface and in secret, almost leading to direct warfare. Could it be that someone wanted to attack the daimyo's mansion? But why attack the daimyo? Don't they know that there is an agreement not to attack the daimyo's? Even if the fights go to the extreme, the nobles cannot be threatened. If it comes to that, the other daimyo's will put a bounty on their heads, and they will be hunted throughout the world. It's not an enemy attack. The daimyo calmly said, Relax, it might just be someone accidentally triggering something as the daimyo. He naturally understood that the ninjas would not harm him. How could ninjas possibly harm him? The chaos in the ninja world was the ninja world's problem. The ninjas could fight and kill each other, but it shouldn't affect him. However, at this moment, boom. A figure was thrown from the gate, crashing through the door and sliding all the way to the daimyo's feet. Surprisingly, it was the samurai who had just been sent to investigate. Who is it? The daimyo was furious. Who dared to intrude into his tower and defend his noble existence like this? But the next second, tap 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 the sound of footsteps echoed in the room. I heard that the lord has been targeting the Achiha clan's properties recently, presumably because you have some dissatisfaction with the Achiha. Natsuo's figure slowly appeared. He calmly glanced at the daimyo and the ninjas and samurais who were on high alert beside him. I, Ichiha Itachi, have come here to pay my respects to your excellency. Ichiha Itachi, that Ichiha Itachi, the one who annihilated his clan. Damn, what are you doing here? Are you planning something against the daimyo? Upon hearing the self-introduction of Ichiha Itachi, the numerous ninjas immediately became tense. Even the daimyo furrowed his brows. Before he laid his hands on the Ichiha clan's assets, he had heard of this name. But isn't Ichiha Itachi the one who annihilated the Ichiha clan? Why would he come here to kill me? But regardless of his motives, he must die thought the daimyo of the land of fire while frowning. He looked at the expensive carpet on the floor, stained with the blood of the samurai thrown by Itachi, and said to Disdainfully, the price of dirtying my carpet is high. Kill him, yes. The ninjas responded in unison, then surrounded Itachi with a murderous aura. Natsuo glanced at them. They all had quite good strength, equivalent to Jonin level. I remember that the 12 guardian ninjas had disbanded before the annihilation of the Ichiha clan. Are these the ninjas recruited by the daimyo? Natsuo asked. The 12 guardian ninjas were the 12 elite ninjas responsible for protecting the daimyo of the land of fire. They were the daimyo's private independent direct force. Asuma had also served as a member of the 12 guardian ninjas for a while. However, they were disbanded due to internal conflicts, because six ninja guardians, led by Kazuma, wanted to overthrow the Hokage and destroy Konohagaka. Unexpectedly, the daimyo had recruited a group of ninjas with decent strength. Ichiha Itachi, daring to threaten the daimyo. You shall redeem yourself with your life. The captain of the ninja team's voice was filled with killing intent as he brandished his kunai and attacked. Attack together. Kill him. At the same time, the surrounding ninjas and samurai all rushed forward. In response, Natsuo only gave them a cold glance. Jinjutsu. Shuringen, the first ninja captain who charged forward was hit by a Jinjutsu, becoming immobilized. His momentum was quite good, but his strength was lacking. As the ninjas charged forward, the first ninja to arrive in front of Natsuo was grabbed by the hands holding the kunai and with a slight force, he swung his arms around, using his own kunai to stab his throat. He then continued to do the same with the rest of the ninjas, while he moved among them as if he were dancing. Blood splattered everywhere, but it couldn't stain Natsuo's clothes. When Natsuo finished killing the last ninja, he grabbed his lifeless body, and threw him towards the charging samurai with their swords. Bam! Several samurai were knocked down directly, falling to the ground, and then Natsuo stepped on them as he approached the daimyo. All this happened in the blink of an eye. The guards inside the tower had already fallen. This sudden change shocked even the daimyo, who was originally sitting securely. Cruel. Cold. Yet the movements were full of beauty. Natsuo calmly stepped over the bodies under his feet and arrived in front of the Jonin captain, who was the first to attack him, but was immediately trapped in his Jinjutsu. This was just an ordinary Jonin, far from being as elite as the ninjas from the Five Great Shinobi Village. In front of him, he had no ability to fight back. Natsuo gently pushed the Jonin, and the Jonin fell directly onto a samurai sword on the ground. Blood flowed, wetting the ground. How is this possible? He's a Jonin level. The daimyo's eyes were red. A hero who can take on hundreds alone. A renowned existence in the ninja world. 
How could he be easily killed? Do you think that just because you are the daimyo, you can recruit any of the true elite ninjas to protect you? Natsuo scoffed. The previous 12 guardian ninjas were made up of 12 skilled ninjas from across the fire country, but many of them were either part of Konoha or related in some way. These 12 guardian ninjas may have seemed strong during the initial development of the Naruto series. The strongest Asuma only reached Jonin level, and this Jonin captain was much weaker than Asuma. So Natsuo, now that he has been strengthened with the system, can kill him so easily. But the daimyo found it hard to believe that a single person could be so strong. The daimyo had personally witnessed the Jonin captain using the wind release to deal with enemies. The powerful wind release directly broke the enemy's formation and then launched into a chaotic massacre. But in the end, he was killed by a Chiha Atachi so easily. So, I really can't understand why someone like you, a waste, would dare to make a move against my Achiha clan. Natsuo shook his head and walked slowly. He went straight to the daimyo and lifted him by the collar of his robe as he crawled to try to escape in a panic. Come, let's discuss first, Natsuo calmly said. May I ask, esteemed daimyo, why do you want to attack my Achiha clan? Do you know the heavy price of attacking my Achiha clan? Natsuo's voice was calm. It even seemed like he was speaking to the daimyo with respect. But the hidden killing intent in his words surged like waves, one after another, rushing forward. It felt as if he would strike directly in the next second. Wait, Achiha clan. The daimyo racked his brain, trying hard to seize a chance to survive. I remember you're not from the Achiha clan, right? Aren't you a traitor? When he attacked the Achiha clan, he conducted an investigation. He knew that there were only a few Achiha left, a couple of harmless kittens. That's why he dared to be so unscrupulous, and made a move on the Achiha clan's properties. Who would have thought that the Genocidaire, Achiha Itachi, would actually knock on his door? Yes, I killed my entire clan. Natsuo continued to say calmly in the cold tone of Achiha Itachi, but I'm still an Achiha. The belongings of the Ichiha clan are my belongings. My belongings are only temporarily left in Kanoha for safekeeping. Since you dare to lay hands on my belongings, I assume you must be prepared to die, right? We've discussed enough. You can go die now. As he spoke, he casually grabbed a kunai and was preparing to kill the daimyo. His movements were neither fast nor slow, but there was no hesitation. An endless killing intent was released at the same time. Wait, the daimyo shouted, if you kill me, you will definitely face retaliation from Konoha. I am already a rogue ninja of Konoha, Natsuo said with a light laugh. Damn it, it seemed to be true. I have money, I can give you money. The daimyo struggled for survival, his forehead covered in cold sweat. How much cash do you have? Won't it have to be transferred through a bank? Natsuo sneered. I am a rogue ninja, and bank transfers can easily be blocked. I can give you many of the industries of the land of fire. I, Ichiha Atachi, am a rogue ninja. Do you really think I can legitimately own any industries? Natsuo said disdainfully. Ichiha Atachi began to bring the kunai closer to the daimyo's neck. In that instant, the daimyo's life flashed before his eyes. Then an urge to survive overcame him, and only one thought remained in his mind. He must survive. This phrase was repeated over and over again in the daimyo's mind. Finally, before Natsuo's kunai pierced his skin completely, he found a glimmer of hope. I can give it to Achiha clan. The daimyo shouted, yes. As the daimyo of the land of fire, I should reward the Achiha clan for their years of hard work for the land of fire. 10 billion in cash, mining rights for 10 mines, shops on 3 commercial streets. These are the rewards I give to the Ichiha clan. Hearing these words, Natsuo finally smiled and let the daimyo go. So that's how it is. Since you have this idea, then you should be a qualified daimyo, he smiled. Although I am a rogue ninja, I actually have great respect for daimyo who work for the country and the people. So, it turns out that a hero like you still has a patriotic heart. The daimyo gasped for breath, tremblingly took out the handkerchief from his pocket, wiping away his cold sweat. I think I should contact the Hokage and cancel the bounty on this hero. No, let the bounty remain. After all, no one can claim it. Natsuo said indifferently. Since you are a daimyo who works for the country and the people, I bid you farewell. I hope you continue to be a good daimyo who solves people's problems. Otherwise, one day I will have to chat with you again about the truth of the world. The truth. The daimyo was somewhat confused. But Natsuo smiled and said, The truth is in my hands. The daimyo unconsciously looked towards Natsuo's hand, only to see him holding the kunai stained with a bit of his own blood. The next day, the daimyo suddenly had a change of heart, feeling that the Achiha clan, who had served the country and endured hardships, should not have ended up in such a tragic situation. So, he not only recalled the personnel who had taken over the mines from the Achiha clan, but also rewarded the Achiha clan for their service to the country. First, it was a huge amount of cash, followed by the most profitable mining rights, some weapons factories and the shops on the bustling commercial streets. For a while, everyone was dumbfounded. What's going on? Is the daimyo of the land of fire really so righteous? Many astute individuals knew the truth of the matter, but they were even more dumbfounded than those people. When the third Hokage received this news, he was completely stunned. What? 
Ichiha Itachi attacked the daimyo of the Land of Fire. How is that possible? The third Hokage was dumbfounded. It couldn't possibly be Itachi. How could Itachi, who loved Konoha in the Land of Fire so much, do such a thing? It must be someone impersonating him. The third Hokage said without hesitation. But who could be impersonating Itachi? Is it an unknown Ichiha? When Natsuo attacked, he made no effort to conceal his Sharingan. The three Tomo. Such a distinctive feature was naturally seen by many guards who were not killed. This is also the main reason why many people doubted that Ichiha Itachi was being impersonated. There were only two possible users of the three Tomo Sharingan on the surface, and they were Ichiha Itachi and Ichiha Natsuo. And Natsuo, who had already given up the glory of the Ichiha and had weaker strength, obviously could not have accomplished the feat of infiltrating the Land of Fire Palace, where there were three Jonin guards. Although in the eyes of real strong ninjas, those daimyo guards were all trash. But Natsuo couldn't even be a match for a single one of them. So, the only possibility left was Ichiha Itachi. It's not impossible. Danzo pondered for a moment and said, I remember that recently the daimyo seemed to have made a move on the Ichiha clan's assets. Wasn't it Itachi who retaliated when someone attacked the Ichiha clan's assets before? It might be him this time. The third Hokage frowned. That seems to make sense. But in the end, he shook his head. No, I don't believe Itachi would go after the daimyo. Such behavior is too outrageous and Sasuke might be implicated. I think someone is impersonating him. The third Hokage paused and said, I will contact Itachi later and ask about the situation. Danzo remained silent. He didn't trust the Ichiha, not even Itachi, who helped Konoha exterminate his own clan. But at this moment, he was thinking about another question. Could the person who broke into the root research lab and left inscriptions be Ichiha Itachi? Among the stolen materials, were there Fugaku and Makoto's eyes? Could it be that he learned something and then targeted the root? Danzo fell into contemplation. Meanwhile, in Akatsuki, it wasn't me. Itachi's face turned dark. I've been with Kissum these past few days who's framing me. His face darkened, and his brows furrowed. Attack the daimyo. He would be insane to do that. But according to the intelligence, that person does indeed possess the Sharingan Abito also found it strange, his brows slightly furrowed. It's not you, and it's not me. Could there be another Sharingan that I don't know about? Could it be a Chiha Natsuo who always thinks about having children? Hey, is there a possibility that it's not from the Ichiha clan? Zetsu suddenly proposed a possibility. Abito's brows furrowed. Didn't White Zetsu investigate and find traces of Sharingan Jinjutsu on the bodies of the deceased? No, what I mean is that the person does indeed possess the Sharingan, but they are not a member of the Ichiha clan. Black Zetsu said, what if it's a ninja with a transplanted Sharingan? Like Hattic Kakashi, as soon as these words were spoken, Abito and Itachi fell silent. Of course, Kakashi would never do such a thing, but there was one person who might not hesitate. Danzo, he has in possession the largest amount of Sharingan in the ninja world today. With the power of the root, it wouldn't be difficult to secretly cultivate a skilled individual with Sharingan. Cage level may not be achievable, but with elite Jonin level ninjas cooperating with the three Tomo Sharingan and some well-placed setups, it may not be impossible to achieve all of this. But why is he causing trouble at this time? A war could break out at any moment, and he wants to start an internal conflict. Could Danzo be trying to instigate the nobles to attack the Ichiha clan, so he can finish exterminating them? When Itachi thought of this possibility, he couldn't sit still. He stood up and said, I'm going out you should know what I want to do. He doesn't care about the other Ichiha, but Sasuke must not be harmed. Abito and Black Zetsu nodded. They knew that Itachi was probably going to go out and show his strength to deter Danzo's ambitions. But before Itachi could take a step, suddenly a white Zetsu appeared out of nowhere. Something's not right. Ichiha Itachi has started killing again. Several high-ranking officials and nobles who have previously targeted the Ichiha clan have all been wiped out. And this guy doesn't even bother to hide. He shows his face in broad daylight, wearing a uniform, with no intention of hiding. We need to stop him. This will easily create more enemies for Akatsuki. Wait, why are you here, Itachi? Aren't you supposed to be assassinating the nobles and high officials? Looking at Ichiha Itachi, White Setsu was confused. Abito looked at Itachi in a daze, also confused. Ichiha Itachi was the most confused. Who the hell is using my name to do such things? Since Natsuo already made a move, he might as well fix the root problems once and for all. Likewise, no matter what he does, it is Ichiha Itachi who will bear the responsibility. It's all for Ichiha. Any Anyone who dares to insult my Ichiha clan must die. So, he did not hesitate to find several nobles and high-ranking officials who had targeted the Ichiha clan and slaughtered them directly. Natsuo, as Natsuo, I am weak and I only want to revive the Ichiha clan. As Itachi, I become the Ichiha's wrath. And when he returned to Konoha, the reward from the daimyo had already been given to the Ichiha clan. Natsuo immediately said to the daimyo envoy, As a member of the Ichiha clan, it is our duty to serve the country. As the head of the Ichiha clan, I cannot accept such a generous reward. Please return this reward to Lord Daimyo. Envoy, take back the order. Can I dare to do that? But in the end, he could only bring the rewards back to the capital of the Land of Fire. 
the daimyo reissued the rewards to the Echiha clan, and Natsuo after an enthusiastic statement about the Echiha clan's selfless sacrifice for the land of fire could only reluctantly accept the reward. Natsuo's continuous refusal was seen by observant people like Danzo, who secretly nodded in their hearts. It's obvious that he is very concerned about Achiha Atachi's current involvement in the murders. The person who attacked the daimyo is most likely not him. Many people thought the same as Danzo, and the already small suspicion diminished even more. As Natsuo finished dealing with the daimyo's envoy, he was approached by someone else. Natsuo, have you heard any news about Atachi? Sasuke's face was cold, his teeth clenched. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.